Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to this, the first round matches of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open. It is the 2021 edition, and we're here at the North Shore Squash Club. Looking forward to some exciting squash with the matches already on court, just doing the warm ups. On court seven here, the main court, it is uh, Elijah Thomas up against Mason, Mason Smales. Mason Smales there in the white, the left hander, up against in the orange shirt, it is Elijah Thomas. Elijah Thomas ranked at 238 in the world, and Mason Smales at 412. Uh, Mason now 18, and Elijah, I think, uh, still 18 himself. So pretty young, both of these players, despite having uh, PSA world rankings. And uh, joining me here as we get ready for these first matches, eight of them on this particular court, televised, and also on court six, we're streaming the uh, matches there as well. And the first round match to go on court is uh, Sarah Cardwell, ranked 59, the women's top seed from Australia, up against Katie Carrick from the Waikato, ranked 367. But joining me now is uh, Tim Wachalisi, and uh, Tim, uh, you're the sixth seed for this tournament. It's kind of fun to play some Australians, or have them in the tournament, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's good to see some new faces. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, Dave. But yeah, it's great to see some of the Aussies come along. Um, saw them warming up just before, so they've been on the court and stuff, so it's, yeah, it's good to see them here. Well, some of these particular Australians, um, you've uh, you know, seen a couple of them, uh, a couple who are ranked a little bit lo lower down, and uh, in the cases um, for uh, Damon uh, uh, McMillan and uh, also uh, Benjamin um, Ratcliffe. I saw them, uh, I think it was a week or two ago at Pam Muir. Yep, but yep. it's the others that are ranked a little bit higher that I'm sure you've seen around before when yeah, you talk yeah. about Joseph White and uh, also Reese Dowling. Um, yep. you know, there's some yeah. good players. Yeah, there is. Yeah, I've seen a lot of Nick Calvert. Um, right. He's similar age to me, I think he's a year older. So I've played a lot of squash um, with him. But yeah, I haven't seen much of Joe White and Reese, but. Um, now they've been around for a few years, so they're, they're quite um, well-known players. So it's good to have that high-level um, oh, players gosh. back. Yeah. Joseph White's the second seed. He's ranked around about the 130-odd uh, uh, in the men's there. You've got uh, also the third seed, Reese Dowling, and Nicholas Calvert, the fifth seed. So they're all over the show. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. They're, they're pretty strong. In fact, these Australian men that are here, they are the, um, the top Australian men. Yep. So, you know, yep. I mean, yeah. in, in this sense, New Zealand's pretty strong because we've got Paul Cole yep. at uh, number four and we've got uh, Evan Williams, the tournament top seed here, at uh, 86 in the world. Uh, so it's uh, great that we've got the number one, two and three um, Australian men and I think we've got the two and three Australian women in Sarah Cardwell and um, Jess Turnbull. So it's it's great that they've come across and I think just good for you to get some fresh yeah, it's good faces. To just, yeah, see some fresh faces, play people um, we've never played before. Um, you know, that's what squash is supposed to be like, isn't yeah. it? Well, yeah, we've all been a little bit restricted in so many different ways of, yeah. of, of late. And I mean, uh, you guys must be a little bit frustrated playing someone like uh, Evan Williams. He's won the, the three challenger titles that we've had so far. Yeah. He beat Joel Ascott at Henderson. He beat you and uh, which one was that? Waikato. Waikato, yeah. Louis and uh, Yeah. Beat all the XL boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All, all three <laughs> of you have lost yeah. in finals. There's been a couple that have been very close. Uh, you know, Evan, just with that experience being you know, in some way 10 years older and also ranked inside the top 100 for, for quite a while and been a lefty as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's good for him as well that he knows these Aussies and, you know, we're a different venue and uh, good to see it live here on Sky Sport Next as well. And, yeah, uh, that was good. Just yeah. to see um, Mason Smiles, uh, Tim, he's a, he's a lanky boy. Uh, a few players who come up against him get a bit frustrated because he's got some big hoofs and he just sort of plants them. <laughs> they they chop up over his size well, 15 exactly. feet. I've had a, I know a couple of players who are just, oh, no, we've got to play Mason because... He's so easy to trip up on. Yeah, yeah, he's quite a big lad. I'm really tall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and huge it, lunges, so it's hard yeah, to get around. That, that's the thing. He plants one foot and lunges a lot, whereas yeah, some other players lunge. take smaller steps, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he kind of has to just because of his build and how tall yeah. he is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he's actually he's quite efficient and, yeah, it makes it hard to get around. Right, and being a, being a lefty as well, he's just got that little bit yeah, of advantage. That's another, that's another little trick that you have to get around. And for you to see someone like uh, Elijah Thomas back on the court after, was it Royal Oak that he had a... Was it, yeah, was it against Royal you, Oak. though, was it? No, it was, against, against Louis. Yeah. My he, he took a bit of a tumble and um, did some pretty bad damage to his yeah. uh, ankle, I think he it was. He nearly had to have surgery. I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and he was stoked that he didn't have to have surgery. He wow. was only a couple of weeks ago, so for him to be back on court and looking quite healthy, 
on this call. It will be a little bit of a test for him, really. Yeah. If he yeah. can get through this match, um, even so, just to actually play against someone like Mason and the the confidence to come back after a um, after an injury, you, you've perhaps got that nagging. You know, sort of thought in the back of your mind, haven't you? That, yeah. Oh, am I am I okay? Am I Can okay? I? Am I? Yeah. And, I mean, he hasn't had much match play, so no. yeah, I think he'll take it. I think he'll take it quite easy in this um, in this first set, just see how his body's feeling, and then yeah, after that, I think he'll be. Well, he'll actually, be the the winner of this is uh, faces you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And the next round that will be uh, midday tomorrow. There you go. You're one of the first matches tomorrow. Yeah. On on this court, so you've got a chance here to look at it, uh, kind of. Twice you can look at it uh, the, on the screen and just over the court as well. So a couple of speeds you might say. Yeah, yeah. It's actually quite a lot different watching it in person when you can see yeah. it in person and on the screen. It's a lot faster um, in person. Yeah, it is. It's uh, the different uh, way that you can see the ball coming off the court. Just the different flight of the ball. Yeah. It's, it's, it's quite an interesting thing, really, when you um, when you notice uh, just how fast the ball is going. It's a lot faster, isn't it, in real life? And uh, for you, have you kept up to date with Paul Cole uh, competing yeah. up at Alguna in uh, Egypt? I mean, through to the semi-finals, plays at some uh, very disturbing hour in the morning tomorrow, around about 5.15, I oh, think, is yeah, when he'll be on court. Maybe. <laughs> I think yeah, you I need saw that. He, I thought he had a good win over um, Gawad yep. in the quarter-final. So that was, that was good to watch. He was one love down, wasn't he? And then yes, managed he was. to fight his way back. And I was actually quite comfortable on those um, last three, so he was looking good out there. I think for uh, Gawad's trying to recover from an injury. Yeah, which is, yeah. It's a bit tough. It? It's, it's kind of hard to, to really gauge it how Paul's playing. Ooh. A little shot there from uh, Mason Smiles. Just trying for a bit of a drop, and uh, he, he hasn't warmed up into the match, whereas uh, Elijah, well, we were thinking that he might take it easy. He's Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, Maybe his body's fine. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was. I don't, I don't know what's going on, but Mason has played quite a few matches of late. Uh, he's played really uh, around the country and oh, I think just about every single tournament that's going. Let's see what he can do in this particular point. And uh, gets on the board this time with a, a bit of a drive across court into the uh, backhand corner there. And good to see Elijah sitting back on the court. Let's see what oh, he can do. Serve. Must have been pretty close to being down. Yeah. yeah they it there. Well, we, haven't, we haven't seen uh, Elijah with any atrophy of uh, losing muscle because he's a bit of a lanky lad as well. There wasn't, I wouldn't say there was much to him, but you know, yeah, no, nah. he looks pretty similar, doesn't he? I yeah. think he's been actually getting on court quite a lot, so he's been hitting a lot. Um, obviously, not too much movement, but he's obviously hitting the ball really well, isn't he? He's had a good start here. Looks like he's moving well. All right, so 8 1 uh, this first game, Elijah Thomas, and uh, Mason Smiles, let's see what he can do in this particular point here, uh, Tenwa. Likes to have a go, uh, but then he he's also doesn't mind hanging out in the rally as well. Sort of yeah, a bit of a double yeah. up there. I feel like he plays his best when he's just that little bit more patient and relaxed rather than just putting everything in those front corners. But just hasn't quite found his range here, has he? As a youngster, I mean, what are you now, 20? Yeah, 20. <laughs> a couple of years ago uh, when you were Mason, how difficult was it for you to tell yourself to be patient? Um, yeah, that's something I really struggled with. I think what, watching my matches back is what made me actually change and be more patient. Because right. when you're playing, you know, it's so fast and you think, you think you're being patient and then you watch it and you realise you're not, <laughs> and you're just taking all your opportunities. Um, but yeah, it is tough, um, especially when you're at that young age. Um, I know he really wants to win this match. It's a big one for him. He'd get a lot of points from it. So. Well, there you go. It is the uh, first uh, game uh, very quickly to uh, Elijah Thomas. I'll see if I can get Timo to stay for another one because that one was fairly quick. Yeah, that was, that was a quick one. <laughs> a quick one. But, but that is the thing where uh, live streaming, Facebook Live, whatever, being on TV does, does help because you can look back and as you said when you're on the court is so different to when so you actually look at it isn't look it? At it yeah yeah i've actually never been able to do this like look at a screen and look at the court yeah. so it's, it's quite a cool <laughs> contrast it's so much different exactly and we'll just uh, look across there and um, a bit of smiling between uh, uh sarah cardwell and uh katie carrick and i believe cardwell's up in that one I've quite got the score in front of me at the moment but uh 
They're both laughing at each other. I don't know what's going on there, uh, Tim. Uh, but in the meantime, we do have, as you can see, the first game, Elijah Thomas, 11-1. So what seat is Sierra? Uh, she's top seat. She's oh, 59 seat. in the world. Oh, wow. Yep, there you go. Uh, yep, and uh, she is the daughter of uh, Vicky Cardwell, who was the world number one just before Susan DeVoy took over. In fact, oh, wow. Vicky Cardwell, her mother, won four British Opens in a row before Susan DeVoy won seven in a row. Oh, OK, so, so Susan sort of took Susan over. Susan took over, yeah. Vicky was... Um, I think... Vicky wouldn't care, and neither would uh, Sarah, that, to say that Vicky Cardwell was a hard-nosed Australian competitor. It's yeah. probably a nice way of putting it. You didn't get three points out of her. Full yeah. stop. She yeah. was she was tough on the court. I remember seeing some replays of her playing, and uh, she eventually retired. She was she was hard-nosed Australian. There was a group of Australian players around at that time who yeah, were tough, yeah. real tough to play and real tough to beat. And um, Susan Devoy was, I guess, tougher on that occasion. We're getting ready now for the second game. This the first round match, Elijah Thomas against Mason Smales. Mason out of the Henderson Club, Elijah Thomas out of in Neveson. And uh, he is Elijah Thomas, the New Zealand junior champ from last year. And that was in Christchurch, that one. As we get ready now, Tim, uh, playing against both of these guys, I mean, you've seen them play enough time. You've played them both, played I guess, a, a few times. Yeah. yeah. So, I think I want to see Mason get into Elijah a little bit more. Yeah, try well. And find, his, um, find his length. I think he didn't actually have a terrible start. I actually think Elijah played really well in that first game in terms of taking his opportunities. So what about. To see if Elijah can keep it up. What about uh, Mason just trying to move forward a little bit more and, and staying forward as much as he can? It's a good shot. Yeah, just. Um, Again, he's just got to tell himself to settle down, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. That was a better point. That's a good shot. It was, even if Elijah had got that one back, Mason was still in a position where he could win on the next shot. And on the next shot, he doesn't have to win it straight away. Yeah, yeah. Is, is that one of the key things that you've got to tell yourself is that as much as you'd like to win on the first shot, Win on the next, just keep on going until... Yeah, I mean, you've got to think about the next couple of points coming up, you know. You want to um, get a bit of hurt going into your opponent's legs. You want to make it tough for them, so you don't, you don't want to just try and get the points as quick as you can, you know. Um, especially for me, like, I like to take all my opportunities, but sometimes I just have to say, oh, you know, I'm just going to push this one back again. Some better rallies. In the set now. Oh. And uh, much better point there from uh, Elijah Thomas. Uh, down love two. Now back to two each. The other thing with Mason is that a junior, as we've already spoken about, is height, but he is strong on the backhand. You know, you always try and serve to the backhand side of a junior, but it's <laughs> with someone like that, he, he's strong. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's got he a strong is. wrist, he can do any shots. So having a ball in the air is no, no issue there. Yeah, I think he's really good um, in the air, especially on his forehand. Um, he can generate quite a lot of pace off a of volley, um, which is actually quite impressive. I think it's because of his height. With a junior, though, sometimes you, they've got to realise that pace isn't always going to win. Sometimes yeah. taking the pace off the ball is probably a better option, isn't it? Yeah, like I'd like to see him start lifting a little bit more when he's under pressure, like especially in the front corners, just trying to lift out. Um, he kind of tends to hit his way out. Yeah. So I think well, when he actually lifts, he you know, plays, plays a lot better. Well, this is a better rally in the sense that the pace has changed a couple of times. Sure. And uh, then it is... Mason Smiles coming back. Should be a point. Yes, he's got that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I like, like that in that rally when he started lobbing, then his his powerful drive just then like, was more effective. Well, it's setting up the point, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, he's had a few unforced errors here in the set. And Elijah 
has, has really kept his uh, head very well, started strongly. Just taking their time in this rally. Oh, yeah, a little bit of applause there from Elijah Thomas for a good shot from uh, Mason. I, would you say that for a lot of younger players, the lift or the lob is almost considered a defensive option? Like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I can hit a stronger shot. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not considered an attacking shot from, especially New Zealand juniors. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you want to it, you win by attacking, often. not by almost being defensive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Just a mentality. I think so. I think it's just a uh, mentality for juniors um, here in New Zealand. Yeah, uh, definitely a lot of the senior um, players left a whole lot more. I'm not sure what he was trying to do there. It didn't quite come off too much of an angle on that one as we watched the replay. And, uh, Did he um, change his mind? Yeah. <laughs> I think it looked like he changed his mind. <laughs> yeah, hit the, hit the floor well before the wall. Yeah, yeah. It's good seeing Mason get stuck in, though. Like, he has oh, to start good. getting stuck in. So, that's um, what we wanted. Matches against higher opponents. So it's good to see. Yeah, pat on the back there from uh, Mason Smiles, and uh, I can see a few players coming in. Uh, we've actually got <laughs> one of our informed players uh, just doing a little bit about marking at the moment. And uh, that's Caitlin Watts. It was the choice of you either become a marker for the women's game or you come and commentate. And knowing Caitlin Watts, she quickly took on the marketing, but it's uh, it's good that in these early rounds, players are looking forward to a busy day tomorrow starting from midday and then Saturday uh, two matches you okay with two matches potentially for you on uh, Saturday I think it is two matches Friday Friday two matches Friday yeah, Friday <laughs> tomorrow yeah um, yeah it's quite tough I'm giving you an extra one on Saturday as well <laughs> hopefully <laughs> fingers crossed um, yeah no it's gonna be quite tough especially because you know, we haven't played any of these Aussies before if we if we get there well, it's a bit more pressure because this is a yeah. uh, challenger 10 as well and, yeah yeah you know extra prize money extra points and when we say challenge a 10, that means a uh, 10K prize money. Uh, you know, those extra points can take you, uh, what's your ranking at the moment? Uh, 206. 206, well, if you do well here, you want to go inside that top 200, don't you? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's a nice, oh, great shot, nice, oh, great shot. Yeah. It's a huge, um, huge difference doing well in these bigger tournaments when there's more points up for grabs. Well, that's why some of the Aussies have come across here. Yeah, yeah. There's a smaller tournament in Northern Territory, and they're like, well, we'll come to New Zealand and uh, play a bigger tournament. Yeah, exactly. I think for um, their mindset, it was a little bit like, you know, let's take this opportunity while it's there yeah. and like play some of these players, um, play like different players. And like, yeah, we're really thankful that they came over because it's, it's good experience for us. Um, I mean, it would have been okay if there was no Aussies here, you would have more opportunity to win points, but in many ways you need to play different we, players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're kind of just in our own bubble at the moment, yeah. and so are they really, so yeah. we're yeah. kind of combined now, which is great. Well, the uh, tournaments here in New Zealand have been summer series and a lot of tournaments, whereas in Australia, they're only just starting to actually play, and not so much in Melbourne right now. Yes, yeah. Oh, so yeah. And I think it gets the call there. Yes, gets the stroke there, so uh, game point. And he has got stuck in, as you said. Yeah, I'd like to see him stuck get in. stuck in. Well, wow. he's got the see. opportunity. He's definitely got the game, so... That he's confident in his own game. Um, yeah, back to the Australians. It's a good way to see how we're tracking as well, yep. um, playing each other. He squeezed oh. the arrow there. And yep, no good there from Elijah Thomas. We do have uh, Mason Smales taking the second game, 11 7. So we've evened it up there in this, the first round match of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open 2021.
So back in now for this, the third game. And as Tim Wachalisi said, he'd like to see Mason Smales come back into it and really take the game to Elijah Thomas. Well, he did because he won that second game, 11-7. And as we've been saying, Elijah Thomas coming back from a nasty fall and an ankle injury from the Royal Oak tournament. And Mason Smiles, uh, same age or just a few months younger. The lefty took a while to get going. In fact, Elijah Thomas actually started very well. That was one of the key things there. And let's see what he can do here. One all, as you can see there. And just a, a score update from uh, the secondary court. Sarah Cardwell, the top seed. Uh, she has accounted for Katie Carrick. A bit of a tough draw there for Katie. And uh, the first game, 11-1. The second game, 11-6. And uh, it was 11-2 in the third. So 11-1, 11-6, 11-2. That was Sarah Cardwell, the top seed, ranked 59 in the world. And a, a good, solid start for the Australian, uh, the daughter of the former world uh, number one. That is the secondary court. But in the meantime, Mason Smales, another good start. He started well in that second game. And really worked his way back into the match. Let's see what he can do in this rally. Oh, the boast there from Elijah. He's a little bit frustrated with that one. It was just a little loose at the top of the tin. And great maturity shown from Mason Smales over the last <laughs> over the last year, and he does exactly the same thing just as we speak. of the pace there from Mason Smiles. And that's one of the key things we were talking about with Tim Wachalisi is that for a junior, your mindset is to always go for power. But in that sense, he had a good volley and took the pace off very nicely to control things. And just to let people know, the other court, a couple of the women's matches on. And Alex Hayden, the, what is she, the fourth seed, make that the fifth seed from Australia, ranked 117 in the world. And make that 146 in the world. That's Abby Palmer, who's 117. And she's taking on well, the club manager here from the North Shore Squash Club, Tyler Dubile. And Tyler doing a lot of work setting up this uh, tournament as well. Great to have Barfoot and Thompson everywhere. Uh, branding and making the event look really great. That's a great drive there from Mason Smales using that left hand, a real drive through to the back of the court. And uh, just wondering about the match play that Elijah Thomas has been lacking since uh, Royal Oak. And that was almost six weeks ago. He didn't have to have an operation. He was thinking that he might. But quite tough to come back. And Mason Smales, no. Not an easy opponent. Oh, <laughs> and then he just he didn't even shank it. He uh, missed it just about. again from um, Mason Smales. He's building, building the points very well. He could see that Elijah Thomas was almost sprawled on the ground. Took the opportunity, drove through the ball. And out to a decent lead. Holding on to four points is a good lead. Let's see what we can do here. Some good depth, both of these players at the moment. And then the mistake 
And that may just be the lack of match play completely. And that's probably a mistake that Elijah would. And good to see Mason Smiles. Oh, look at that. Playing the ball, just chopping under it, taking the pace. And now up to game ball. So giving that one away, but uh, not a big deal. Still has a five point buffer. The battle of the 18 year olds here. So far, just a slow start to the tournament. One match completed, and that was 11-1, 11-6, 11-2 to Sarah Cardwell, the top seed in the women's. And now we have a two game to one lead for Mason Smales over Elijah Thomas. This is the first round of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open. Plenty of matches coming up this afternoon. In fact, next up on court is Riley Jack Vetterbronquist from Northland up against uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe from Australia, followed by Natalie Sayers against Abby Palmer. Then it's Zach Miller, Commonwealth Games representative, against Matt Lucente. Those are the next four games on this, the main TV court. So back on court, Mason Smale's pretty keen to get going. In the meantime, Elisha Thomas is still having a little bit of a chat with coach Paul Hornsby, the resident coach here at the North Shore Club, also coach for Auckland and Northland. And he'll actually be joining us on uh, Sunday for the commentary of the men's final. Already booked in for that one. And for the women's final, it'll be former world number six, Shelley Kitchen. Good to have those two former players with me for the final call. And we're watching lots of players now. Just wondering, in the seeds, the top seeds, well, they aren't playing today. But as Tim Wachalisi did mention that two matches for him tomorrow. Well, that's if he wins his first match. Don't want to presume anything. Yes, strong early to start with here. Thomas now in the green shirt. Just trying to hammer the backhand of most smiles. Nice touch. Better rally so far from Thomas. These two players, one of half a dozen. In the men's draw, nice placing the ball away across court. Uh, five or six players in the men's draw who are under 19. And interesting to see that Mason's not actually wearing the goggles. I did believe that that was a requirement for any junior player. 
in a senior or a junior tournament. And check with that later. And uh, Elijah Thomas won't be 19 until November. He's pretty much at his PSA high ranking. His highest or best is 236. At the moment, it is 238. So he's up there. And Mason, I believe, he is 18. Uh, make that 19 very shortly. In fact, he's still younger than that. There we go. We're making him older than what he is. He is 17. He's still only 16, turning 17 next month. Well, you can hear the conversation there. And a couple of smiles between these players. Right, well, we got the score correct in the in the uh, in the end. So three love to Elijah Thomas. Just the confusion there between the marker and the referee and also the players. So a better turnaround now for Elijah Thomas. He was certainly struggling, but Mason Smale has been very consistent. Thomas appeared to be missing the match practice. Let's play. It appears that Paul Hornsby, the coach of Eliza Thomas, may have informed him, may have informed him to uh, attack the backhand of Mason Smiles. And it appears to have worked so far in this the third, and uh, we can just see now Zach Miller arriving, the Commonwealth Games rep. He's come up from the Waikato. Of course, his sister, Emma Miller, is the New Zealand at number one domestically, or New Zealand that is. Joelle King ranked at number eight. Emma Miller. 97 in the world at the moment. But in the meantime, it's Elijah Thomas playing very well on this. The Oh, nice little dink there from Mason. That big reach. And Elijah Thomas at 5-1. <laughs> Great shot from... Mason Smiles, he does have a big reach and was able to get to that one and then blasted away across court. I think Elijah Thomas knew that you know, he should have done a little bit more with it. And he's managed to get a couple of points back. Here's Mason Smiles, the lanky left hander. And even though he's down by two games to one, just good to see Elijah Thomas back on the court after his outstanding ankle injury. Next up on court, Riley Jack Vedder Blomquist from Northland, or now here at the North Shore Club, going to university, wants to become an ambulance officer. And he's up against the Australian Benjamin Ratcliffe, ranked 328. Yeah. It's just a favourite shot there of Mason Smiles just sitting there saying, hit me for a winner, and uh, he duly did.
confirming that that was a, a stroke in favour of Elijah Thomas. You can hear the referee and... Yep, there we go. And a second one on the right. Just no way that Mason Smiles could have got out of the way, but... Oh, maybe the referee thought he could, but still a stroke against him. And we're having a series of them right now. <laughs> Although the players have got to be a little bit careful. They don't just assume that it should be a strike, just in case the referees think differently. Oh, got to the ball, almost slipped over. It is getting into winter. A lot cooler than one of the last tournaments we had here, which was the... NZ Champs in November, where it was hot. And with a big crowd in, it was, it was fun, but gee, it was hot. Oh, there's the 10. And at this rate, we could be going to five with three-point buffer there for Elijah Thomas. It seems that whatever the pep talk was from Paul Hornsby has worked so far in this, the fourth. And nice assertive way of finishing it off. Paul sitting there Heading it away for a winner, we are now going five uh, with the fourth game, 11-6 to Elijah Thomas against Mason Smales. So both players back on court now, and Mason Smiles has had a change of shirt as we get into their fifth. And it really has been, as the score suggests, all Elijah Thomas with some good play in the first. Nice fight back from Mason Smiles. He took the game to Elijah. And it appeared that the lack of match play was shining through for Elijah Thomas. Just wasn't quite in it in the second and third. However, in the fourth, got out to a decent lead and kept it and uh, a series of strokes a couple of them going the way of Mason Smales uh, going the way against Mason Smales that is. and a nice play there when he takes the ball on the volley yeah, he's uh, got to remember they can do so well he's got such a big reach and he's actually got very good touch and he's still so young <laughs> saying that he was 18, we just rechecked and uh, won't turn 17 until next month. Uh, 
just a reminder of the one match they've had completed so far. There was Sarah Cardwell over Katie Carrick, 11-1, 11-6, 11-2. Uh, she could expect that because uh, Cardwell ranked 59 in the world and Carrick 362. Of course, Cardwell, Commonwealth Games rep for Australia 2018 Gold Coast. Let's now see with Quick fire, three love lead from Mason Smells. A nice depth on that serve. And nice just holding the ball on the forehand from Mason Smells. Does that very well. Typical left hander. You know, to hold the ball a little bit later in just about every single racket score. from uh, Elijah Thomas. Both players in this rally all over the place. The lift from Thomas. Staying this rally well, moving very well. And, and yes, let Thomas was looking for a stroke. Probably fairly accurate. Both players having to get up close to the wall. So we go for a let and a four love. Nice and smiles. That's good depth. The ball not dying yet in the corners. Quite on that one, so five love. And we'll just have to wait and see what happens as we get into the evening and about uh, the ball. If it's going to fade away when it hits those back corners. It's not cold, it's certainly not hot. for Elijah Thomas. Oh, just tripping over his feet. No, he was actually tripping over Elijah. And we're looking for a let on that one. And let's just take a look. <laughs> well, he gets helped up off the ground. Just saying that he tripped on the uh, back heel of Elijah Thomas. Didn't quite come off there, and he's a little bit frustrated. 6-1 is a good buffer, a good lead for Mason Smiles. Driving through that serve. And what are we looking for? No there. You just see the head go down from Mason Smells. Come on, give me the little lead on that one. Just a reminder that we do have in this tournament the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open. Uh, there are plenty of other grades as well, so good to see you. In fact, the, the first division has some very handy players, a couple with PSA rankings actually, in the men's. Let there. You 
could see that Elijah Thomas was doing his best to get out of the way. And just the frustration coming through as uh, five points in the lead, Mason Smiles. And to win this in five games, the second match on the main court is Riley Jack Vetter Blomquist from Northland from Fongaray, or just outside of Fongaray's original club. Now here at the North Shore against Benjamin Ratcliffe. Very similar rankings that the uh, two players there have. And the frustration there from Elijah Thomas. I'm sure he feels that if he had been playing a lot more matches, this particular contest could have been a bit closer. That's a better rally. He'll be pleased to get that one back. Controlled it nicely, moved forward, was in a good position in the court, and guided it across court. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah, the ball just hitting that uh, side wall and dying. Really a good shot. Oh, oh, not quite. And almost put himself in the wall to get to that one. Didn't come off in the end. And it is a match point, game point. Match ball. Call it what you will. If he wins this, he's won it. That's it, hitting the top of the tin, and it is a five-game win to Mason Smiles. And 11-1, make that 1-11, 11-7, 11-5, 6-11, and then 11-3. So a good solid win there for Mason Smiles. He goes through the second round where he will take on this sixth seed. Timwa Chalisi, and that game will be from midday tomorrow. In the meantime, we can tell you that the first match on the secondary court, Sarah Cardwell, the top seed in the women's, defeated Katie Carrick in a straight games. Coming up very shortly, though, in fact, you can see him on the court already. Riley Jack Vetter Blomquist. He will take on the Australian player, Benjamin Ratcliffe, in just a few minutes' time.
So underway now with the second game on the show court, and it is Riley Jack Better Blomquist. He is up against Benjamin Ratcliffe, the Australian player, and Veta Bonquist with the ranking of 402. Benjamin Ratcliffe, uh, a ranking of well, 328. And uh, albeit that that seems around about 70 places, it doesn't really mean that much in this sense. And looking at Ratcliffe, he uh, played at the Pamu Open, also played at I think he might have played at Browns Bay in the satellite. I'm not sure about that one, but uh, yeah, he is at just uh, 21. And Veta Bonkers, not exactly old. And he's still 18. Yep, 18 year old. From uh, Fongaray or the Manaya Club just outside of Fongaray. We should be in for a little bit of a battle here. Both players happy to bide their time in the rally. One thing with Ratcliffe uh, watching him play before is that he doesn't mind taking the pace off the ball. He's not necessarily like Mason Smales or anyone like that. He likes to hit winners. And, go. and just getting the stroke on that one. So the rallies could be... Oh, that. I was about to say the rallies could be long, and that one just dies completely in the corner. But just the two matches completed so far. With Mason Smales coming out a five-game winner over Elijah Thomas, and Sarah Cardwell, the women's top seed, winning in straight over Katie Carrick. And a little bit of frustration there for Ratcliffe. There for Vita Blanquist. Not taken. As we look at the second court and check on the score with Alex Hayden, the seeded player from Australia. Taking the first 11-6, but up by just one at the moment against the manager here at North Shore Squash Club, Tyler Dubele. And 9-7 now to Alex Hayden. So uh, working away there to get through the next round. Was just the earlier match here on the main court. Mason Smiles will now take on the sixth seed, Tim Chalisi. And that match will be at midday. Oh. He's putting that one into the turn. Trying to keep it a little bit too tight. Oh. <laughs> a lot of good footwork. Would have been a great dance move. Didn't come off. We needed a, uh, a let on that one. A bit of applause on the second quarter as <laughs> Tyler Dudley raises around in the uh, raises around in the uh, winter point. And Blackcliff now a very patient on the court. Oh, that boast there from Veta Blomquist. Not coming off because Ratcliffe was just sitting in a good position and able to. Uh, Take away the ball. Take away all the pace off it.
very efficient swings from uh, Ratcliffe. Necessarily do a big swing through the ball, a big backswing. Almost stabs at the ball a lot. Nice bounce back. Yeah, and a fair stroke there. And it gives him the first game ball. And Veta Bonquist not been able to get through. And we'll get out of the way on that occasion. And there we go, first game on this the main court as Benjamin Ratcliffe keeps it nice and efficient, nice and tight. 11 8. In the meantime, it is a victory for Alex Hayden. And uh, nice and comprehensive in the uh, third, 11-6, 11-7, and 11-2. So that's Alex Hayden through to the second round, the Australian player. As we said, 11-6, 11-7, 11-2. And that is over Tyler Duvalet from uh, the North Shore Club, this club. So a uh, well done there to Alex Hayden. In the meantime, we'll come back with the second game in just a moment on this court with Benjamin Ratcliffe winning the first 11-8. And a little bit of a discussion there between the players and the officials. And ball just dropping a little bit there. Ratcliffe in the blue. Riley Jack better Blomquist in the white. The rankings not too far away from each other. And just going to see Ratcliffe take the pace off the ball. He's very good at doing that. He'll work. Better Blomquist around. And take his time in the rallies. And if you're just wondering about the names, it's taken us a set to figure it out, but if you're wondering about the names that are coming up on the scoreboard, uh, Riley Jack better Blom Blomquist? Um, not quite. Uh, he'll certainly be better, well, he is on the scoreboard at this stage in the second game. Uh, that is Vettet, B-E-T-T-E. -E. Uh, don't look at us, uh, look at the referee's typing skills. I'm sure they feel certainly embarrassed about it. In the meantime, Riley Jack is uh, doing very well in this particular game after dropping the first, 8-11. See what he can do here. And uh, just losing that point. And see here. 
cutting underneath it a little bit too much. Good position, most of this really. Oh, that's a good touch. I don't think he's going to get the decision he wants. No. Back to a three each. Inspiration there from Ratcliffe and also Verde Blanquist. You're hearing from the referee as well, and both players clearing it. be a stroke with that one uh, fairly straightforward no argument there from Blomquist on that one and the first several that finally out of that we see a bit of a big swing swish at it usually holds back his shots quite a bit takes away off the pace certainly been his style over the last uh, year or so and uh, used that at the Pam Muir Open Lifting the ball nicely there. Happy to take his time. <laughs> Not sure where Better Broncos could have run to then. And Ratcliffe let the ball go way into the middle of the court. Okay. Well, there's a lot of uh, discussion going on here, and it's working in the favour of Ratcliffe. A very wrong question is just got to be careful that he doesn't let it get to him. And stay focused on the rally, just like that one, punching the ball away, cross court. And a good play. There, the error. Let's see what we can do. Just the high, so sort of taking the pace off again, putting it high onto the back end of the junior. And a little bit check which way we're we going. And to the turn, there's a couple of uh, really unforced errors which have turned things around and given the Australian a good opportunity to make it to love. the let call on this one and no major discussion from either player.
there, Benjamin Ratcliffe. Yes, I won it. I'm going to get off here straight away. 11-8, 11-6 uh, against the teenager Riley Jack Vetter Blancos. Not better. Uh, but we'll get that sorted out shortly, no doubt. A lot of questions of the referees in the second game in particular. Not in a bad way, just one of the explanations. And quite a few lets or calls for the let. Certainly Ratcliffe is very quick around the court. <laughs> there you go, there's a call. Was that ball good? And uh, the answer was yes. Obviously, seeing the ball from a different angle can create the question mark in the player and also the referee. There, held his patience, got himself into a position where he could win the rally and just worked his way up. Bang. Yeah, nice play. It's the, uh, just that extra push of a couple of years or so. He's able to be patient, and that's one of the key things, as we were discussing earlier on with Timo Chalisi, where he thought as a junior he was being patient, but when he looked back on it, he was able to see that, oh, maybe I'm not. So when you get the opportunity to watch your game on a TV or stream or anything like that, you can actually see that what you think is slow and patient is not. In the meantime, on the second court, we await Winona Joe Joyce against Lana Harrison. Two matches completed there already, and the two Australians going through to the next round. That's Sarah Carbell and uh, Alex Hayden. Just the one match completed so far on this court, and that was Mason Smales winning in five over Elijah Thomas. Just a couple of discussions there again. A question on the score. It's been one of those matches. It is the early stages of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open. Plenty of matches on tomorrow. In fact, for some players, there will be two matches. We get into the semi finals on the Saturday and the 
finals on Sunday. That's better play from Veda Blomquist, taking the ball on pace on the full and just needed to move his feet a little bit more on that one. Swing and a miss. The rest of the rally was great. He really just cemented himself to the tee. Wasn't moving no matter what. Taking the pace off both times. to do a bit of work to come back and move this rally see what he can do and the left both players almost hopeful in a way putting their hand up uh, looking for whatever they could out of that one The next match is in Italy, says, against Abby Palmer. It'll be entertaining. Abby Palmer, the left-hander from this club, the North Shore Club. And Natalie says, uh, usually plays out of Belmont, uh, sometimes out of Remuera. Belmont Club, not too far away. Goes to school on the uh, North Shore. And uh, we can just see her warming up. Uh, that's Lana Harrison, actually, to the side of the court warming up. In the meantime, on this court, you see the control of the rally here from Ben Ratcliffe. Now we push into the corner a bit. Happy to be patient. And that patience paying off for Ratcliffe is very good with his positional play. Doesn't have the power but able to drive through the ball quite nicely, take the pace and know what to do against a more junior player. Just turned 18 uh, a couple of months ago. Here's Riley Jack Veta Blomquist, and you can see the punch away there with the cross-court forehand. And Ratcliffe looking very good to try and win in straight games. And as we were saying, if you can have a quick match, that'll be a beneficial because potentially tomorrow you could be playing two matches. And there we go, 11-8, 11-6, 11-3. Disappointment there for Riley Jack Veda Bronquist. He won the New Zealand Juniors earlier this year. Uh, however, this occasion, it is Benjamin Ratcliffe, the Australian, going through to the second round. And in that second round, well, he's going to take on the seventh seed, Joel Ascot. And that'll be an interesting contest as well. Joel Ascot, seventh seed, runner-up at the Henderson Open earlier this year. We'll be back with the next match, though. That is Natalie Says against Abby Palmer, the first round of the women's, very shortly. <laughs>
Cheers. Just uh, warms up and uh, looking at the two players firstly on court at the moment you have Abby Palmer the left-hander she is in the peach colored top I don't actually know what color that is but peach will do and Abby Palmer the fourth seed ranked 117 she is up against uh, Natalie says and Natalie is 256 in the world although a little bit younger and uh, there we go, Mace. Your name's up there and uh, oh, right yeah. up there in the print, huh? Good to see. Yeah, it's good to see. <laughs> All right, and uh, Natalie says is the 16-year-old uh, from. Uh, well, she lives on the North Shore. Doesn't belong to this club. That's Abby Palmer's club, the North Shore club. Uh, Natalie does play out of Belmont, I think, or Rindewera, or she's gone from one to the other. Uh, lives on the North Shore. Goes to school. I think she's uh, at Tekapuna Grammar. And uh, all the local high schools here. But um, firstly, Mason, uh, Mason Smiles, uh, well done on a five game victory. Oh, cheers, thank you. It, it wasn't, it was five games, but it wasn't necessarily a long time out on court, was it? Nah, it was just um, a few short rallies, and a few mistakes from Elijah yeah. and myself, yeah. Well, for, for Elijah, I mean, obviously it's his first match, proper match back from a. Yeah. Uh, what looked like an injury where he was going to almost have to have an operation at one stage. So that's, uh, I mean, in many ways, it was it was good. You know, he started very well. Yeah. Good for him. Living one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. What, what happened there? Does it, did it just take you a while to get going? Uh, a little bit, yeah. I was just, he was just a bit fresh and, you know, he was just cutting everything off and putting me under pressure. So it was tough for me to, you know, start off. But after the first set, just started to, you know, get warmer and just... Well, you took, from there. You yeah. took the game to him, didn't you? And those in the second and third, it was like the, the first you were ah, yeah. and the, <laughs> the second and third you you were you were playing the points. Yeah. Because I mean, he he did also play well in that first game. Yeah. He, he <laughs> you know, chopped me. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't that he uh, that you made all the mistakes. He was actually playing possibly better yeah. than what you thought. Playing great squash. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, for for you, you played a lot of tournaments and a lot of matches, haven't you? Yeah. I mean, how About many like tournaments? 96 matches really? on ice squash, something like that, and then <laughs> more PSA on. So, wow! <laughs> so not just uh, interclub around Auckland for Henderson, but you've played. Um, you're in the Waikato. You played uh, Warrensville and yeah, yeah, you played everywhere. Ones. Yeah, all oh. the PSAs, everyone. Wow! And I keep on getting your age wrong, but according to the um, PSA, you're, you're still 16, turning 17 yeah. next month. Next month, yeah, 17. So. Yeah. Well, that, that's what uh, Mason, uh, that's what, sorry, Tenwa was just saying. Yeah, you've got the big hoofs and yeah. the big range and people still trip up over you. Yeah. <laughs> a few players don't like playing you because you, you, plant, big. Yeah, you plant that big foot. and, and <laughs> Size 15. <laughs> Size 15? Yeah. <laughs> uh, have you stopped growing yet? Um, I think so, yeah. I think I'm done. <laughs> well, I'm sure your parents would be happy if you did stop. <laughs> Probably, oh, no, more shoes for him. <laughs> and... Uh, just uh, watching another left-hander here in the yeah. first rally. You guys just can hold the ball later. Yeah, a little bit longer, more of a delay. How, how does that happen? It shouldn't really happen, though, should it? You know, right-handers should be able to do the same thing. But yeah. is, is there something in the way that in every racket sport, it seems that left-handers can just 
hold the ball or whatever they're hitting a bit longer. I guess we're just special, and you know, <laughs> that's, that's why you know we well, got good holds and everything. So yeah. that's a great explanation. <laughs> I love that, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Hey, uh, you've seen these two play down here. Is there anything yep. in particular you're uh, expecting out of this match? Um, like Abby, she's a really good player. You know, hits a lot of winners, and you know, she's a good shot maker. So we're not going to have long, long rallies in this no. match, are we? So we'll have, have to see, you know, a lot of winners from Abby and, you know, yeah. And, I mean, Natalie's um, so strong, isn't she? Yeah, she's, she's only 16. strong player, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Abby, well, she's still actually only um, 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah, 23. Yeah, yeah. so it's good. she's pretty young, but she seems to have been around, particularly at this club, North Shore, for such a long time. Uh, for you, Mace, uh, second round, you've got a quite a... Tough one. Tough one. Temwa, so. Yeah, against Temwa Chalisi, the sixth seed. Uh, he was watching you. I mean, it's not that you guys don't know how each other plays. No, nah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely no. <laughs> yeah, you guys have seen each other a lot. Um, what do you have to do against him tomorrow? Um, yeah, it's going to be tough because I know he, he's on like another level of squash, so he's, he's up there. But um, I'm going to try my best and try and cut his time down, you yeah. know. Play, play a bit of fast-paced squash and just try and cut it off from the middle is yeah. Yeah, probably my plan, I guess. Yeah. Tim Maia and his brother are playing different styles, don't they? The one yeah. plays a different style yeah, to Tim yeah. you know, Maia. How would you describe the, the difference between the two? Of them? Like, I, like, I know that Lawamba, you know, hits like really fast, fast pace. Right, yeah. And Tim Maia's a bit more patient sometimes. Patient, yeah. Although Tim Maia is certainly trying to get something out of his system. He's... Uh, Makes about two, sometimes three, unforced errors a yeah. game. And that's where the better players can get him, can't they? Yeah. yeah. So any loose balls from him, just the higher players can put them away. And right. Yeah. And for you, uh, how much are you practicing? You know, when you're not playing a tournament like this, how much do you practice a day? About two to three times a day. Trainings, yeah. Two. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's impressive. About two, yeah. In the morning and then usually... Around night, and yeah. And you do any fitness work aside from on the court? Yeah, I do fitness and and gym work. So I've been doing a lot of that, trying to improve. Did a bit of in the summer. Because I mean, what for someone like yourself, as you know, you're, you're 16 turning 17, but you don't want to over bulk yourself. Yeah, you don't want to nah, do yeah. too much of that. Is it just being consistently fit and running or anything? Yeah, stuff like that. And, you know, a little bit of running and you know stuff like squash on court stuff like ghosting and you know. Right. You know, small things like that. Do you enjoy running? Yeah, I don't mind running, you know. Okay. It's a thing that I didn't really used to like it, but yeah. when I, you know, did it more, then, you know, it's not as bad. Oh, so, yeah. And uh, Abby Palmer just about to uh, wrap up this first game. I a good bit of depth here in this rally. There you go. When she takes it on the full, that yeah. really helps. Oh, just sticking under the line there. Oh, good length. Oh, there's the mistake. Unforced error, yeah. Yeah, so the first game, 11 2, Abby Palmer. Uh, remember that she has been ranked inside the top 100, currently 117, whereas uh, Natalie Say is just down the rankings a little bit, and, uh, you know, that six, seven years can make a huge amount of difference. Mason, um, just before, before I let you go, for you uh, training out of Henderson, that's your main uh, club and main place that you yeah. do all your training? Yep. Who's your main coach? Uh, so Glenn Wilson. Right. Training from every week, you know. He's so a, do you go to him because he's out east? He's, he's in Howick, so yeah. it's a bit of a drive. <laughs> wow. But it's worth the drive, you know. Okay. Do about like, you know, hour and 30 to two hour sessions with him. So. Okay. All right. So yeah. it's worthwhile getting out to, to Def Howick and definitely um, training is, yeah. with him. And what about, do you uh, ever have a hit with uh, Shelley Kitchen or do any running with her? Because uh, for um, someone who's a little bit older than you, she's fairly she, fit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not Not so much. Yeah, I have my own like cousin shields trainings, and we do right. do all that, and then do a lot of you know solos and um, ghosting and stuff. But right. one of my main hitting partners is um, Matt Taylor from okay. Home Bay. So, oh yes, <laughs> yeah. Matt, Matt will keep you out there for a while. Yeah. He's a love hitting with him, you know. Always gives me a few tips and right. helps me out. So yeah, appreciate all the training. Oh, for stuff. Yeah. And uh, just um, your cousin shield team for Henderson. Who who are a couple of the players in there for you? Um, so. 
Belt like so there's Lance, then um Lance Leo, Bidos, yeah. Lance okay. Bidos, Leo Fatiolofo, and okay. then, um me. And then, That's yeah. pr pretty good depth having so, you at number three. Yeah. I could play for number five because I think we're all within a hundred points, but oh, really? I think they want me to get the better games and okay. I think put me at three. Yeah, so. Do you enjoy playing those sort of um, team competitions? Because it's quite yeah. a some players are there for social. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, from uh, what I understand there's about 18 teams in the men's in the Cousin yeah. Shield and I think maybe 12 in the women's uh, Mitchell Cup which is that's pretty good good this year you know a lot of players and I think uh, playing down at uh, the Devoy Club in Tauranga you might get to play on the glass court I'm not sure if it's been completed yet but yeah. that'll be quite fun that, that'll be good to play on yeah. it you know. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Well, look, Mason and Smiles, I'll let you go, mate, because uh, you probably haven't had a shower yet. No, I haven't. Yeah. That's a ref, so. <laughs> so you went straight from a five-gamer to uh, doing riffing. the you're riffing, and then yeah. uh, now you're talking to me. Yeah. All right, well, look, we'll let you go and uh, go and have a shower, loosen up, because tomorrow you've got a big match against uh, Tim White Chalisi. Thank you very much there, Mason and Smiles. Right. Cheers, Dave. Thank you. Great stuff there from Mason Smale. As I said, he's only 16. Turns 17 next month in uh, June. Another 16-year-old on court, but having a bit of a struggle, as uh, Natalie says. Has all the potential, just perhaps not the, the patience or the array of shots. And that's a much better shot, though, as we, as we speak, from uh, Natalie. It's uh, tough work on court. And you come up against uh, an opponent such as Abby, only six or seven years older, but she does have that ability to change her shots and uh, just work through the ball and also being a left-hander. It's something that Natalie doesn't come up against too often. There is uh, Winona Joe Joyce, who is a left-hander in the women's, uh, Abby herself, and uh, sometimes one other player. And in the men's, uh, you've got Mason Smiles, uh, also Evan Williams, uh, I think one of the Australians. Yeah, definitely one of the Australians is also a lefty. And a couple of points so far here. And this is the second for Natalie Says. Let's see what she can do. Yeah, no that. I think uh, it was a bit slow actually looking at getting to that one. Trying to call the shot, or call the let. A bit too early as well. A couple of the other matches that have been completed so far. We had Mason Smiles in five over Elijah Thomas. Thomas coming back from an ankle injury that I was expected that he'd need surgery at one stage. Uh, he didn't. That certainly may have uh, slowed him down a little bit. Uh, perhaps the confidence not quite there. Also, we had Sarah Cardwell winning in straight over Katie Carrick. Alex Hayden, one of the other Australian players, she won in a straight. And then we had Benjamin Ratcliffe in a straight. There, another Australian, ranked 328, defeating right, Riley Jack Vetter Blomquist, 11 8, 11 6, 11 3. So getting through the matches. And this one here, a 7 3. We'll just check on the outside courts now. And uh, the other match on court is Lana Harrison against Winona, Winona Joe Joyce. Winona Joe Joyce from Hawke's Bay. And Harrison 11-4 and 8-5 in the second. So it looks as though she'll be able to go through if she keeps up that form. And let's take an update of some of the placings where some of these players have gone through. Sarah Cardwell will take on Alex Hayden in the quarterfinals of the women's draw. It's a 16-player draw. And Lana Harrison, if she does win this, will take on the winner of Natalie Says against Abby Palmer. So it's pretty congested as well, remembering that the top two seeds are the Australians, Sarah Cardwell and Jessica Turnbull. Cardwell ranked 59 in the world, and Jessica Turnbull 66. In the meantime, back to this particular match. It's another game ball. And 
it is another point there for Natalie Sayers. Well, she'll be pleased that she's doubled what she got in the first. Uh, still a long way to go. Oh, nice. Just took her time there. And it took the backhand early oh, to drive it down the wall. So that is a two games to love lead for Abby Palmer in this uh, the first round. Women's draw of the Barford and Thompson Auckland Open. Natalie says it's going to have to do something a little bit out of the ordinary and uh, something not like that if she's to come back against Abby Palmer taking the first 11-2, 11-5 and that is oh, it was better play it was a good set up there from uh, Natalie says but in the end what Abby Palmer can do with angles is uh, just another step up thing with the left hander was speaking with Mason Smiles. <laughs> he uh, said that as a left hander we're just special. I'll uh, try and ask Abby Palmer about that and a few other left handers but <laughs> he considers that lefties are special. Uh, right, good on him for that one. You can see the frustration there from Natalie says Put her head back a bit and go, oh no. She's just got to settle herself down and take her time, patience. Uh, that was what too much Elisa was saying. For uh, the younger players, you just need to take your time. Don't rush your, rush your game. That's the shoulders back and head back. Not being very happy about things at all, Natalie says. She has the shots. But look at that. Perfect from Abby Palmer. Up close to the wall and strikes the ball very well. Cross court. And that's a winner. Throwing in an unforced error won't help at all. So 6-3. 
Palmer against Les and up by two games to love. Just change the pace a little bit, Natalie. And push the ball back. And there you go. There's another mistake. He just needs the patience. He's got plenty of power. Letting it go now as Abby Palmer just stays steady. But Natalie says the frustration's coming through. That's, oh, yeah, well played. And Abby Palmer just driving that one down the uh, side. You were her opponent was. And yeah, it seems as though Natalie is, has no answer, hasn't uh, got a plan B. In fact, panel N A isn't overly working either at the moment, which is a shame. there, two, five, and three. A complete performance from Abby Palmer. And the frustration from Natalie Says. Straight game defeat in the first round here of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open. Coming up next will be Zach Miller, Commonwealth Games rep from 2018 for New Zealand, against Matt Lucente, one of the former junior champions for New Zealand. Could be an interesting contest. Zach Miller always gives a lot of uh, unorthodox shot making. So it'd be great to see how he plays in this particular contest. And Matt Lucente, well, he's got plenty of shots. Doing a lot of coaching at the Belmont Park Club alongside Manu Yam. And so that match coming up in, well, got a little bit of a break actually, uh, about uh, 15 minutes. In the meantime, on the other court, it looks as though we also have a match completed. And that was Lana Harrison against Winona Joe Joyce. And we'll just let you know the result of that one. It was 11-4, 11-6, 11-4, with Lana Harrison winning that contest. So a couple of matches just racing through. We had the one five-gamer. Of course, that was Mason Smales over Elijah Thomas. But in the meantime, the other matches have been straight all over the place, including this latest one where Abby Palmer defeated Natalie Says. 11-2, 11-5, 11-3. We'll be back not too far away with our next matches. Next on the main court, as we said, Zach Miller against Matt Lucente, followed by Glenn Templeton against Finn Trimble, Chris van der Sam against uh, Australian Damon McMillan, then Lance Bidos against Wills Donnelly, and finally, on the main court, Ella Lash against Rebecca Barnett.
So underway in this, the men's first round. It's been a little bit of delay because we had a couple of matches where, well, the scores were pretty straightforward. The first match, of course, of the day was uh, Elijah Thomas against Mason Smales. And uh, that went five games. And that was Mason Smales coming out there. And uh, joining me now, one of the volunteers, as they all do, a volunteer to come and chat is Benjamin Ratcliffe. And uh, Benjamin, you got that all right? Yep. You're yep, on. Oh, great. Good. You have not we haven't even been introduced. I'm Dave. Uh, there you go, Ben. And a uh, good win for yourself there in straight games over Riley Jack Vetter Blomquist. Uh, You've got to be fairly happy with a straightforward game, uh, straightforward win? Yeah, definitely. I'm happy with that. 
it's not often I win three love in a PSA <laughs> match. So. Well, I, I've seen you play at, uh, where was it, Pam Muir, and um, your particular style is you, you're happy to take the pace off the ball a little bit. You know, I mean, you'll go for a winner when you get the opportunity, but you, you tend to take a little bit of pace off. Compared yeah, to a lot I, of the big hitters just like to go for it, right? I mix it up a little bit. Um, just one, well, I mean, it's just your style. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, everybody's got their own particular style. For you, you know, in that uh, particular match, in that win, you, you hit a couple of really powerful shots. But in some ways, against a junior like Peter Blancos, against Riley Jack, taking the pace off is actually better in a way. Yeah, it's um, to do uh, variability. Like, you can play the hard drives and then, um, yeah, take the pace off a bit. It's to try and you know, disjoint their movement a bit, yeah. especially someone as quick as Riley. Um, I know myself as well when you get held and then, you know, you got to do a squat and then kind of judge where the ball's going next and it just becomes more difficult and more work to do. So a bit of hold and, like, change of pace. and Yeah, it's, it's um, that change of pace, I think, really deceives people. Now, something that yeah. juniors, I mean, I'm not sure about you as a, when you were playing as a junior, and you're not exactly old now, but when you were playing as a junior, you know, coming up against someone who did change the pace was... Almost something you weren't used to. Yeah, well, it's yeah, it's it's mature squash, really. Like yeah. you so often like look forward to playing a junior, knowing that you know you put them in straight sh <laughs> short, they squeeze out a cross court and then hunt the cross and <laughs> play them like that. And that's something I love to do. I love to take the ball in short, straight, or a cross drop or something like that, make it more interesting. But uh, yeah, it's definitely good when you can squeeze them and and play the, get the game on your terms that way. And for you, how many weeks have you been here in New Zealand? Because you've played and you you play anything before that? Yeah, um, uh, just a local event in Tawa, in Wellington. So okay. I've got family there. It's been pretty sweet. I'm um, from Victoria, so <laughs> unlucky Tate not being able to make it. We, we feel for you. Um, yeah, so we're going into lockdown tonight yeah. at home. And um, I fly home on Sunday night, so it's still a debate whether I... I go home into lockdown or if I stay here for a bit longer. <laughs> you could almost stay here for a bit longer. You had two weeks uh, time there's uh, Northland. I don't know if you could ask for a wild card into yeah. that. But, uh, I think Damon's playing in that, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Damon's playing. He's, um, he's staying here longer than I am. But <laughs> I mean, it's, it's one of these weird and wonderful, uh, weird things, I guess, that you know, for a lot of uh, New Zealanders and Australians, we've been fortunate. However, I think both countries were just waiting for... A, Waiting for it to happen. Yeah, it, it really was inevitable, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we are in the most lucky position around the world with you know, being relatively COVID-free. I think the yeah. stat was one in 200 cases escapes yeah. hotel quarantine. So, I mean... It's, it's one of those things, it right? Is what like it you is. said, you played a bit in Tawa, then you played, um, you know, Pan Muir. Yeah. Um, you know, did you play Browns Bay last No, week? I didn't play Browns Bay. I, I played another local event in Wellington. Okay. Well, so, I mean, that, that's, that's great, though. Yeah, you know, you've been squash and... Yeah, playing a lot of squash, and uh, now you're in this particular tournament and playing against the seventh seed, Joel Ascott, uh, tomorrow. That one, 12.45, that'll be tough. You've seen him play. Yeah, I played him in juniors. He gave me one of the best choppings of my life. He beat me 11-1, 11-1, 11-1. Ooh, yeah, so that's one of those matches you remember. Yeah, because it, it leaves a scar. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's one of those ones where, yeah, he played phenomenally well, and I just couldn't do anything. I was just happy yeah. to get a point in each game, really. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a tough one when you are getting beaten like that. It, you know, a coach will just say, oh, go for, go for the next point and you know, work on the next point. But that next point doesn't always come. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big thing being patient and squash. You know, sometimes you feel like you're rushed or you're... Well, that was one of the things that um, we did have uh, happen when speaking to Mason Smales today uh, about... He said when he's, uh, when he, well, he is still a junior, he's only still 16. <laughs> and uh, he, he said that, you know, playing uh, as a junior, he thought he was being patient. Um, you know, that was him. And also too much, at least he said, you know, when you play as a junior, you think you're being patient. But if you get to watch back the, uh, the video of it, you go, oh, oh, I've got to learn these sort of things. Yeah. And uh, it's tough, isn't it? It's definitely a learning curve for me as well because I do like to take the ball in short. And I've got to be, you know, more aware of what I do at the front of the court so as no I get punished completely I've definitely learnt my lesson last few weeks sitting with Evan up in Wellington that you know 
a loose ball at the front court, I'm not yeah. really going to get back, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. off his racket. So. And uh, looking at the uh, state of squash in Australia, I mean, at the moment, New Zealand's ahead. Uh, it, you know, it changes. Yeah. Uh, it's not always that way. I mean, uh, Joseph White is uh, the top-ranked Australian male, and uh, he's ranked about 130 in the world. Is yes. there anybody else ahead of yeah. him? You have to ask him what his exact rank is. I'm not exactly sure on it, but yeah. he'll happily tell you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, New Zealand's fortunate that, to that extent, having Paul Cole. You know, as, yeah. as a real competitor exactly. playing in the semi-finals uh, overnight. And um, Alguna in Egypt against uh, Tarek Momin, who he's actually beaten the last time he's yeah, the last two times, actually. Kind of a bogeyman for Tarek, isn't it? Yeah. I remember that Paul's, like, Paul's first big win was, uh, I think it was Canary Wharf against yeah. one of the 100Ks in, in, in London. Yeah. It was against Tarek as well. And I mean, Tarek beat him in the World Champs final yeah. when, when Paul was a bit... He'd been just... Oh, some matches yeah. that, so... So that, that was, uh, you know, it's one of those things. And, I mean, it's an opportunity of, for Paul to go through potentially to the final and uh, <laughs> s see how he goes. Could be against uh, Farouk uh, or Farouk's, um or maybe uh, Asha Baggy, yeah. I think. So uh, it's great. So you follow the international play? Yeah, I get right into it. I oh, that's yeah, great. watch the replays. I try not to find out the results before I watch it to right. make it more interesting for me. I get... Yeah. Quite yeah. annoyed if people tell me the results. Oh, you watch well, I won't do that tomorrow because I have to get up at uh, stupid o'clock in the morning to actually watch the game, uh, which is always a little bit tough in New Zealand uh, when they're playing in Egypt. It's just like, oh my goodness, yeah. uh, one of those things. But it's great when we do have that, you know, players overseas for Australian women. Uh, there's really, it's a little bit of a struggle there as well at the moment. Yeah, um, I mean, it's one of um, those things. Yeah, it is. It's just the waves of how it goes here. Sort of goes in cycles, doesn't yeah. it? You know. Is there any juniors that you see at the moment that um, are really coming through? Not for me. No, I haven't. Well, I mean, I've been out of juniors for three years right. now and haven't been around that yeah. that long. I definitely know there's um, a couple in WA coming through. Oscar Curtis, Don Clarkson, um, and then there's all the guys around at Carrara at the right, uh, that's the, uh, the National the Gold Centre Coast. there. Yep. Yeah. So that that was uh, where the uh, courts from. The Commonwealth Games got shifted yep. just down the road, effectively, yep. about 20 k's down the road or whatever it was, because uh, being there at the Gold Coast uh, for the uh, squash, when New Zealand did exceptionally well, uh, the squash was played in Dreamworld, which was kind of weird. And, yeah, um, I imagine it would have been. Yeah, it, it was there, and you had boxing next door, and you had roller coasters going around and people screaming and that sort of stuff, and uh, this was in a movie set venue. It was uh, great, but it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have been um, amazing to go to. I was unlucky. I didn't get to get to go to the Commonwealth Games to spectate. But yeah, uh, one of those things. I mean, hey, you got um, Birmingham uh, next year. I mean, is that it? Be you have to be a big improvement on the rankings, I guess. Yeah, for you. definitely. Um, I don't know if it's a, too much of a goal for me. I've got my studies as well that I'm pretty invested in. And okay, what are you studying? Uh, to be a pilot. So oh, really? I've got a few more hours left on that. And yeah. It's, that's good. No, yeah. No. So. Well, you know, I mean, so I guess you could be domestic, but international pilot may yeah, not be it not, right now. Not, not good at the moment, but <laughs> I'm a long way off the airlines, if anything. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that's great. And um, for you, uh, I mean, certainly the Kiwi players are very happy to have you here and uh, Damon. And then and when we look at the others who have come along, and uh, Joseph White and uh, Nick Calvert and uh, Rhys Dowling in particular, and the, and the men's there, it's just fantastic because... I could see everybody before we started today just chatting. Yeah, it's it brings a, a new dimension to it. I mean, we all we all get along. We all know each other because yeah. we trans has been rivals. We come over to play your tournaments and and vice versa. You yeah. guys come over to us, but it might be different this year. Yeah. Well, I, I, I guess the Australian Open's in uh, Bega. Yeah, it's in Bega, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's what I was. I, I mean, I'd heard of it because of the yeah. cheese and having lived in Australia, but I couldn't find it on the actual. No, uh, they map. do a great job of that tournament. I played it earlier in the year. John Stilianu, right. there's the promoter, and he's a great bloke. So, yeah, people who have been to that tournament rave about it and, and right. love what John does with that club there in Bega. It's about four or five hours drive from Sydney, kind of uh, southish. Yes, and it's I drove from Melbourne when I went. Oh, and yeah, it was yeah. uh, eight hours. Wow. So. Yeah, it's okay. So it's not the easiest to get to, but. Yeah, and is your family, uh, how are they feeling with you over here and them stuck um, as such in I Melbourne? I think they're just a bit jealous. I think my, my younger sister was definitely the most jealous because she'd been wanting to come over and see her, see oh. her grandparents, but uh, oh, no. I took the first plane over, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, and, it, and it's tough when you're a bit, 
younger, I guess, and uh, wanting to uh, get out and do things. Yeah, and exactly. I mean, you, you can sort of say here, well, yeah, I went to a bar afterwards and uh, you know, sat outside and had a coffee and, uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of tough. Um, just as we look at this uh, match here, and uh, Matt Lucente in the red did have a decent lead in the first game. Zach Miller, uh, always known for a bit of personality on court and uh, more than one unorthodox shot or rally. It's probably a nice way of putting it. Uh, have you seen him play before? Uh? Yeah, I have played him before, once at Coffs Harbour. Right, I think okay. I lost him four, but yeah, he's a clean ball striker. Um, Zach. And he, he moves really, anything. Yeah, he moves really well. He's a Chris. solid boy, but he, he doesn't mind hitting a, just about any shot. And I think no one really likes playing him here because he can, uh, he can do anything. And that's, yeah. that's the sort of problem. And, uh, yeah, by the way, we can tell your family that they can actually listen back to this, I think, on uh, YouTube. Yeah, so. I think I just got a text from Joseph where he said, mate, you've got to talk me up more. So, <laughs> Joey, you do enough of that yourself, mate. So We'll see how he goes. <laughs> uh, who's he going to play in the draw? Uh, we'll check on who he's going to play the, uh, tomorrow, Joseph. Uh, you're going to play either Leo Fadialofa or uh, uh, Joe Smythe. They're on court at the moment. I'm not sure how that one's going. So, uh, Joseph, if you win that one, then you will take on, well, you'll either take on Ben or uh, Joel Ascott. So uh, there you go. There's your draw. Uh, we won't go any further than that, uh, Joseph, because, well, we'll just wait and see, shall we? <laughs> uh, in the meantime, <laughs> we'll just take a look at a couple of points here. Nice, clean. Oh, I almost got that. Gee, I thought that was a clean winner. But uh, that's the thing with Zach. You don't think he's going to get to some of them, but he's just one of those guys that, as I said, a lot of the players here don't really like taking on because he's a little bit unpredictable. Yeah, exactly. Is there, uh, who, who's the... I mean, at the moment, Joseph White's got the top ranking, but I mean, Reece Sterling and Nick Calvert, there's not much between those three, is there? No, I, I would say they're all pretty similar. I haven't yeah. seen them play much lately, but I definitely put them way above my abilities at squash, so. Oh, well, I mean, it's, you're using it, you know, well, I mean, look what you're using here. You get yeah. to see your grandparents yeah. uh, hang out there, play a bit of squash, and uh, you're outside of a lockdown at the moment. Yes. Hopefully, it's only the one place that gets locked down. Uh, bad enough with just Melbourne. We don't want it either coming across the Tasman or, or going anywhere else in Australia no, either. Not. Uh, is it? Is it one of these things with... Uh, What's well, a bit of an ambitious what ask you, for a let there? Yeah, I, <laughs> I was thinking of you as perhaps a little bit too slow to even ask. First movement was the wrong way, I think. Yeah. The right call has been made. Well, this is uh, Matt Lucente. I don't know if you've played against him, but he... Um, was a very good junior here. I think he won the junior camps once or twice and then uh, went on a bit of a scholarship to the States. And in fact, Gabe Yam was meant to be on a scholarship to the States, but it's sort of been put on hold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like everybody, having to adjust. And uh, Matt Vicente, a bit of coaching at one of the clubs here on the North Shore of Auckland. And look at this rally. Oh, he was in position. Had to overstretch as we take a look at the replay here on Sky. Yeah, just. Yeah, he's almost like he saw it too early. Yeah. <laughs> too many options. At it. And tell me, uh, Benjamin, just in Melbourne, how is the squash interclub like here? The interclub is quite strong in, in Auckland that you might get. Um, Matt Lucente playing for one uh, club. You've got other players in this uh, tournament all playing for different clubs against each other once a week. Yep. Is it uh, similar in uh, Yeah, we've, um, it's called Club Circuit in Melbourne. So we've got seven teams at the moment. Um, my team has not made finals, unfortunately, but that's all right. Next season, a bunch so of So there's oldies. pretty much players like you, uh, one, a, a player yep. like you in most of the clubs? Yeah, definitely. Um, so... Damon McMillan, who's here, yeah, he lives in Melbourne as well. He plays at the Grace Park Hawthorne Club. Um, they've got really good facilities. Got a, a full glass court All right. that's um, like inbuilt in the traditional style. So that's that's really nice to play. It's probably my favourite court in Melbourne. And then I play for MCC out at MSAC, where the oh, yeah. Commonwealth Games were held in 2006. Yes. Um, then there's the, you've got the Lilydale Club. You've got um, there's two teams out of Kuyong. Um, who else am I missing? Mulgrave Country Club. Okay. Oh, that's great. So a good, good spread of, yeah, uh, of clubs. Is. I mean, that's the thing that New Zealand lacks at the moment. There is one glass court just been finished off in uh, Tauranga where 
next weekend all the clubs are getting together. There's 18 men's against... Oh, yeah, uh, Shields. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's the one. I've they're all getting together. It. Yeah, uh, well, there's, you'll hear probably about the social activities. Oh, I definitely have as well. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few players in it who are ex-former good players who are still... Um, Competitive when it comes to t oh my goodness that's good hands by Zach. <laughs> that. That, but that's what we expect from Zach. Is here we go. Let's just take a look here. Comes no, back. Shot makers are they have light and quick reactions. I mean, all squash players should yeah. as well. I mean, Zach played at the Commonwealth Games, uh, made the second round of the doubles, I think it was, and uh, or maybe the mixed. Uh, he played with uh, Amanda Landers Murphy. Uh, Landers Murphy went on to uh, win the, the women's doubles with uh, Joelle King, and Joelle King actually winning three, uh, two golds and one bronze. In fact, uh, her and Paul Cole should have probably won the uh, mixed as well, but they ended up playing three matches in one day. Oh, that's right. And uh, ended up losing the pool match, which was winnable. Yeah. And if they had won that, they would have uh, gone through to the... Uh, and the right draw instead, they could only ever play for bronze, but you know, still, that was yeah. four medals for the New Zealand squash team at the Commonwealth Games, and uh, two gold, one silver, and one bronze. Yeah, so it's getting a, it's yeah. getting a medal in nearly every event, isn't it? There's yeah, yeah. It, it was only the men's doubles that they didn't, and that was Paul Cole and Campbell yep. Grayson losing to a couple of very experienced big Aussie guys. Yep. The court looked very small. Zach Alexander and um, David yep. Palmer. Yeah, that was it. it you know, very experienced oh, uh, when yes. it came to it. You know, singles and doubles, and uh, the two very small Kiwis, as it was, yes. <laughs> Cole and uh, Campbell Grace, and uh, yeah, it was competitive. It was on one of the back courts because I think they, the Aussies wanted to play on one of the, the smaller back courts for everything they could, and a uh, great match. But uh, just one of those things. The Australians certainly did very well in the doubles at the Commonwealth Games, and a good long rally here. Not much ball fine in the back of the wall here. <laughs> we haven't seen much at all. There's one. Better. <laughs> it's a great finish, isn't it? It is. You're Don't leave the ball there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just see it as we're coming up. Couple of shots here and bang. You know, I mean, the Sandy wasn't in a bad position, but the ball was just hit. Yeah, it was um, probably more good defense on Zach's part there to force that loose ball from being under pressure. And uh, have you you played on this court earlier on? How did you find it? There were not too much. Uh, you know, sometimes courts just drop away and yeah, die. Yeah, I in found the back. it very quick on the front wall, which okay. I mean, I. I, I just don't like wet walls. I think as most players do. <laughs> I've heard that if it gets humid in here, it, it oh, hit the wet walls. And I, I tell you, it was the national champs here uh, last year in November because everything got delayed. Yep. And it was packed. And November, and Auckland get, get extremely humid. <laughs> it was. People were just about dying in here. I tell you, sitting back here was. Uh, was tough. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least we're sort of in almost winterish now, so yeah. squash as it should be, maybe. Um, I don't know. I always say I think springtime or autumn is more the best time to play squash. Right. I know it's not too hot. I mean, traditionally, a winter sport, but yeah. traditionally, but that doesn't mean much now, does it? Now, a lot of the clubs in Australia are very old, so especially where I'm from in Shepherd, and that it's just so cold in the winter. Yeah. But you know, yeah. you get into summer and it can be 45 degrees and. Oh. Yeah, it's, nasty. it's pretty yuck in there. <laughs> nasty there. Well, Zach Miller taking the uh, first two games, 11-7, 11-7. And uh, we'll let uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe go in just a moment. But, um, you know, the, these courts, uh, the back wall didn't die too much. It was just the speed off the front. Yeah, was, it's a relatively true court, which is, okay. is what That's you great. want. You don't want too many nuances in it. Like, I mean, they've got a door and, they've, and, yeah. and lines on the walls and the floor. So, I mean, we're all in the same conditions as well, so... I mean, if you're complaining, <laughs> yeah, mean, yeah, it, it's uh, not your one opponent person. has the has the problems as well. So, well, how did you find uh, Pam Muir a couple of weeks ago? Because of the, the the kind of glass front wall. Yeah, I like the glass front wall. So it's um, there's a few of those floating around Melbourne. Right. So that's the one at Grace Park. It's even got the glass sides as well. Okay. So full glass. Um, yeah, I love it because yeah, it, it was it, kind it of can, noisy in the way. It is very noisy, yeah. but the ball does die 
short, but you do get a lot of reward for your length as well. Right, okay, so that's that's an important thing. And, and like we're saying, in this particular match, we haven't seen the, the ball hit the back wall too often. Both yeah. of these players love going forward. Yeah, it's um, yeah, there's finding side wall too, too early on the length, and it's just popping out a bit and sitting up because it is quick. So there's, they're not getting much value out of out of their length ball, which, I mean, it is it's quite valuable because it's the base of your game, and if you're not getting that right, I don't, yeah, you're going to get chopped up. All right, well, that's Benjamin Ratcliffe, one of the Australian players here in New Zealand for this, the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open. We're going to let him go because uh, he's going to get more abusive uh, messages <laughs> from uh, Joseph White and anybody else as well. Uh, so we'll let him go. Thank you very much there, Benjamin Ratcliffe. Thank you. Good to have Benjamin Ratcliffe with us. He was the winner in those straight games today. And good win indeed over Riley Jack Better Blomquist. Straight games, two, five, and uh, like that, uh, sorry, we've got that uh, score not quite right. Uh, the uh, score in that one was 11 8, 11 6, 11 3. Just some of the other results that we had. And that was Mason Smiles in five over Elijah Thomas. Abby Palmer in straight over Natalie Says. The other court, uh, Sarah Cardwell. That was uh, in straight games of uh, Katie Carrick. Alex Hayden, a straight game winner. And Lana Harrison, also a straight game winner in her match over Winona Joe Joyce. In the meantime, back onto this court. And it is Zach Miller playing some pretty good squash. Uh, just a wider range of shots coming through. Some good reactions. And as uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe was saying, you can hit all sorts of shots. Got to be careful with them. And some good reactions coming through as well from uh, Zach Miller. Uh, played next level for the Commonwealth Games. Let's see what he can do at the moment. Uh, Matt Vicente staying in it. But Zach Miller is such a difficult player to take on. bit more depth in this rally. It was something that uh, Ben Ratcliffe was talking about, that there hadn't been much depth so far in the match. Oh, I don't think you can call that. You're a little bit slow getting to that one, uh, Matt Lucento. A little bit slow to start getting to it, that is. And let's now check on uh, which player they'll go through to meet. Some good matchups coming up in the, uh, just the Second round for the men. That's some good matchups in the first round, that is. So, looking through the draw, Zach Miller against Lucente. The winner will take on the fourth seed, Luamba Chalisi. Uh, Luamba ranked around about uh, 140, 149 in the world. And there we go, there's the error out of Lucente. And giving 
Zach Miller, good opportunity. 7-3, the four point buffer just whipped it too much. Probably didn't need to go for quite as much. The next match coming on. Glenn Templeton against Finn Trimble. Well, there won't be much space on the court there. Both players are very tall. Ooh, just hard to lift it. And not enough there from Lucente. Yep, there you go. You can see the two players there. Uh, Templeton from the Caddy Caddy Club out of the Bay of Plenty, although I think Henderson are claiming him as well. And Finn Trimble, originally out of uh, Whangarei, playing out of the Waikato now. So the players moving around to wherever they have to go for matches or whichever club wants them. Oh, look at that boast. And didn't quite pick that one up. So Lucindy gets one back. That's only when you do see uh, Trimble against Templeton. Both players are round about. Oh, Trimble, I think, is six foot five or thereabouts. A nice shot from Zach Miller, just so easy. Makes it look easy. Uh, he said in the past it's his special talent. Oh, there we go. That is it. 11 7, 11 7, 11 4. And as we said, it is Zach Miller going through to the next round. He will take on the Wamba Chalisi. They have played recently. I think it was at the Waikato Open, those two players. And a good win there for the Waikato player, Zach Miller, defeating Matt Lucente. And going through to the second round here of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, a welcome in for this first round contest between Glenn Templeton and Finn Trimble. Templeton in the blue shirt, or the, I guess the bluer shirt, and Finn Trimble with the white shoulders. Now these two players, yeah, there's not going to be much room on the court, both very tall. And as we said, that is Templeton there from Catty Catty. Sister Katie, somewhere around the venue right now. I think she's playing shortly, or in, uh, yes, she's the last match on the other court against Jessica Turnbull. And for Finn Trimble, certainly strong links with Northland. However, now out of the Waikato. And just waiting for the score to click over. Updating a couple of other scores that we had. We had a four-game win for Benjamin Adams over Upper Fari Lofa. 11-9, 11-9. 8-11, 11-8. -11, Four games, but it felt like a fiver. There we go. We've got the score up now. Templeton 
Just racing to a three lap lead. Doesn't mean too much between these two players. Could take a little while for each of them to get into the match. And good to have uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe, one of the Australian players who's training to be a pilot. Comes from Melbourne, the rest of his family is in lockdown, aside from his grandparents who are in Wellington, so he managed to visit them. So good for him to get that and uh, see his grandparents. Uh, but he's not too sure if he can go home on Sunday after this tournament. Uh, pretty tough for people in Melbourne and uh, let's hope that it doesn't spread anywhere else. Ooh, let that one drop fairly low there, Glenn Templeton. And one. Just looking at the remaining matches as we continue tonight. Chris van der Sam against uh, Damon McMillan, one of the Australians who has been in New Zealand for quite some time. Nice shot from uh, Templeton. And then we have Lars Bedos, uh, the Commonwealth Games rep for New Zealand, 2018 against Wills Donnelly. In a women's match, our last 15-year-old from the Belmont Club on the North Shore up against Rebecca Barnett, who was one of New Zealand's best juniors for some time, and then came back. I think she made the semi-finals of the Challenger Tournament at Royal Oak a couple of months ago, or a month ago. Uh, those are the remaining matches, and you can really see the ball dying in the forehand corner of these players. It's been pretty good all day. And as uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe said, uh, been pretty fast and pretty true. But then we are getting into the evening a little bit more now. And 6.45. Uh, the players, the last time they played here for a major tournament was the NZ Championships, and it was hot. It was November, it been delayed a couple of times last year. And uh, a lot of perspiration, a lot of sweat on the court. So let's just take a look now at this particular point. And you can see Trimble with the serve. Nice and high. Let's see if these players can get a bit of depth on the shots. It's an interesting boss. And the reaction volley. Didn't have much on it. Chop from the forehand, taking all pace off it and just sitting there. Yeah, it was a bit busy there in the centre of the court. A bit of traffic and uh, hard to move Trimble out the way. It was in a good position. Comes it back to a 4-5. Didn't necessarily put too much power into it, but it was a nice drive. Stay low. So the player is quite happy to just take their time in this as we look at their draws. We're in the top half of the draw with these two. The winner of this match will take on uh, Sean Wigan in the second round. That match will be 1.30 tomorrow. Uh, Sean Wigan, one of the most continuous champions here at the uh, North Shore Club. And, uh, his ranking still pretty good. Plays a lot of tournaments and is known for running, running and running very quick around the quarters, uh, Sean Wigan. In fact, his ranking at the moment, 219. Whereas you look at both of these players, and uh, Templeton at 370. And we have Finn Trimble, not too far behind. Well, 100 places behind. Doesn't mean that much when you're going 370 to 470. Trimble is, uh, let's have a look, 20... 
one, make that uh, 22 years old. Let's check on the mass. And where is Templeton? Not much younger. He seemed to have been a junior for years and years and years. And he is, well, he'll be turning 20 in October this year. And much better rally there. Templeton, let's have a look at this last point. Oh, what a shot that was. So far, no one quite... <laughs> there we go, you look at the face there of uh, Templeton. And uh, no one able to be able to get that lead, or a decent lead. That's better, you take off four, oh, just that hug the line. Yeah, nice play from uh, Templeton, just checked where his opponent was and slapped at the ball, came through very nicely. the tin there, the loud hours. Keeps uh, Trimble into it as we go to the tiebreak break tenner piece. Okay, so we are Trimble with his first game ball. Both players have a slightly casual stance in the way they play. That's just because they're lean and lanky. not even waiting for a call on that. Just taking the pace off a little bit. Just waiting for the opportunity. Still haven't seen too many deep shots. Just, there we go, there's one coming through. And got there. So, nice shot from Trimble. See on the replay as he comes around, just drops it too tough there for Glenn Temple to get back. Looking for the call. And gets to the lip. Looks like it's actually uh, Matt Lucente on the scoring, on doing the marking. So there's your punishment for losing, you have to do the marking. First game to offend Trimble. It was as if both players were just taking the time, putting the feelers out. They know each other's game. And uh, there we go. It is uh, one game to love. Finn Trimble against Glenn Templeton. As these two players try and work their way through the uh, first round at the Barfoot and Thompson, Auckland Open.
And back in straight away with Trimble against Templeton. His first round match at the Barford and Thompson. Auckland Open. And as we look at the draw with some of the matches completed so far in the men's. It's uh, the winner of this one will take on Sean Wigan tomorrow at 1.30. And we have uh, Zach Miller against uh, Lasante. Well, that was Zach Miller winning in a straight. He'll take on Lawamba Talisi. Mason uh, Smales, he defeated uh, Elijah Thomas and he will take on Timwa Chalisi. That's a midday match. Benjamin Ratcliffe from Australia. He, well, he won through in a straight over uh, Riley Jack Vetter Blomquist and will take on Joel Ascott. And uh, let's just have a look. Leo Fariolofa uh, against no, Benjamin Adams. Actually, that was Upper Fariolofa. And uh, just checking uh, on that one. That was Benjamin Adams goes through to take on Reese Dowling. So a number of matches completed already today. It is only day one. Tomorrow, a lot of the players, or the winners, could be playing two matches. one oh. <laughs> almost around the back didn't quite come off good play from Glenn Templeton so we haven't seen either player just grab the match by the scruff of the neck just yet it was as if in the first game they were just feeling their way through it Very similar so far with Templeton taking a 5 2 lead, I think it was in the first, now again in the second. Trimble just hung in there, didn't do anything exceptionally uh, exceptional at all, actually. Just played steady. for this tournament that there are around about eight divisions in the men. I think about five in the women. Uh, the divisions are very strong. <laughs> and the record just thrown up in the air a little bit there from Trimble. a little bit now as it gets a bit colder into the evening coming up at seven o'clock certainly playing very true earlier today 3 30 start tomorrow a midday start going right through until well, 9 30. players. Templeton with the four point buffer at the moment. <laughs> Very casual there from Trimble. Much footwork and not much racket work actually on that one. point as these two players just seem very casual. <laughs> the ball dying 
And uh, the look of disdain from Templeton as he saw the ball just about roll. Well, it's been scrappy so far and uh, we haven't seen much to really take it to the next level from these guys. So a little bit uh, disappointing uh, for the players, uh, scrappiness. So the game ball to uh, take it to one apiece and let's hope there can be a little bit more formation in their rallies in the next couple of games. Oh, there you go, that's much better play from <laughs> from Templeton. Well, at least they zapped up the energy in the last couple of points. It just took a while to get going. And it is a one game all between these two players. As you can see there, Trimble taking the first 13-11 and the second going the way of Glenn Templeton. Well, this is day one of four for the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open at the North Shore Squash Club. And eight matches on this, the main court, eight on the secondary TV court. So far, the winners that we've had, Sarah Cardwell, the top seed in the women's, Alex Hayden, another Australian. We had Lana Harrison defeating Winona Joe Joyce. Uh, Benjamin Adams, the winner over Upper Fadi Lofa. Those are the matches completed so far on the second court. As we look across now to the main court, where we have action from Glenn Templeton and Finn Trimble, one game apiece. Earlier, Mason Smales in five over Elijah Thomas. Ben Ratcliffe in straight over Riley Jack Vetter Bronquist. Abby Palmer straight against Natalie Says. Zach Miller straight over Matt Lucente. So, uh, Quite a number of matches completed so far, and tomorrow, well, it's a biggie, starting at midday and going all the way through until pretty much 9, 9.30. We'll see how well it goes. And uh, plenty of matches also on Saturday and then the finals day on Sunday. You can, if you're in Auckland, come on through. It'll be uh, good to see more people here. Uh, Slow day today with the players coming in. All the seeds start playing tomorrow. And there will be 
good to see some of them. They'll be expecting quite a few long matches as we get into the second round of the men's and the quarterfinals of the women. So we expect some good quality squash coming up. players at three apiece already. See if we can get a bit of structure coming into their games. So far it's been a few raw sort of points. Updating play across in the second quarter at the moment. It's fairly close between Leo Fadilofa and Joe Smythe. Fadilofa out of the Henderson Club. Joe Smythe from Bay of Plenty. And it's Fadilofa who took the first 11 9. Certainly a lot of running between these two youngsters. get the lead out of this match and it is 10-9 in the second to Fadi Lofa but plenty of fight out of Joe Smythe in the meantime solid smash from Finn Trimble retrieved from Glenn Templeton and applying it deep low flat into the corner and in that forehand corner in particular, it's staying low. And Templeton couldn't quite get to it. In the meantime, oh, Joe Smythe keeps on hanging in. A little bit of frustration now showing on Glenn Templeton's face. A couple points ahead now for Finn Trimble. So uh, these two still looking for a real pattern in their match. It's not going to happen. It's just not really their style of play at the moment. In the meantime, we can tell you that Leo Fatialofa and Joe Smythe on the second court. It's one game each there. Fatialofa taking the first 11-9. Smythe taking the second 12-10 and they're at the break those two players that is on court six in the meantime Trimble continues to uh, gain a little bit of momentum in uh, this the second game let's see if uh, you can finish it off a slap at that one uh, not much timing on it from uh, Templeton as Trimble goes ahead 10-5. Oh, and there we go. Hitting the top of the 10. As Finn Trimble takes a two-game to one lead in this first round match of the Barford and Thompson Auckland Open.
So two games to one, Finn Trimble against Glenn Templeton. I'd like to thank all the sponsors. Oh, there we go. It's got to keep it away from that corner at the moment. So I'd like to thank all the sponsors, Barfoot and Thompson and uh, Squash New Zealand. Plus everybody else who has contributed here, the North Shore Squash Club, and uh, particularly Tyler, the manager of the club. We're actually not playing as well, uh, although she did strike one of the better Australian players. Alex Hayden, Hayden winning that one over Tyler Duvalier in straight games. But certainly she's put a huge amount of effort into putting on this tournament. So is John Fletcher, the general manager of Squash Auckland. As Trimble takes a three love lead. Oh, had the opportunity there, tried to play it a bit too tight. And the 10 getting in the way. And uh, a little bit of effort putting the uh, court as well to uh, the cleaning. That was Tyler as well. Uh, in the meantime, we continue on court six with Upper Fatia Lotha Jr. up against Joe Smythe. And looking at the score there, four all in the third. It was the first to Fatia Lotha, 11 9. The second, 12 10 to Joe Smythe. And as we move back onto the main court, Finn Trimble, 4 2. And let's see what he can do. Oh. That was not a clean hit, and into the tin there. So both players, we're still hoping for a bit more form into the rallies. Not quite coming at the moment, but in the end, you'll take a win if you can get it. And there we go, the serve, then the almost mishit one. Glenn Templeton talking to his racket. It's not quite going his way at the moment. As Trimble casually works the point. Just the timing appears to have uh, left Templeton a little bit. It's great recovery so far from uh, Templeton. Again, a little bit of frustration. I thought he should have got to that ball, didn't quite. No let. So that's a bit of a relief there for Templeton to get one point back. It's been a struggle these last two games. Better shot though from uh, Templeton, and he's just back in the set a little bit more. See if he can keep up a little bit of momentum. Well, it's only been two points that he's won back. What can you do with it? And not going the way he wants at the moment. There, just whacking the ball away as uh, Trimble looking. Well, Trimble looking all right, but it was still frustration, even though he won the point, Templeton. And still see <laughs> no. No foundation or no build-up of the points between these two. 
just a little scrappy. Uh, if Tim uh, gets through on this one, I'm sure he'll just be happy to get through it. Not exactly an easy task coming up in the next round, though, because the winner of this match will take on Sean Wigan, and they know that Sean Wigan loves to run the ball down, knows these courts extremely well. It's his home club. Well, if you get through that one, you're most likely to take on... Oh, Evan Williams is in that quarter of the draw, the top seed. And there we go. That is it. A four-game victory for Finn Trimble. And dropping the second. So Trimble taking this match 13-11, 7-11, and then 5 and 6.
So a slight delay to proceedings here. Just a technical, the boys had already got underway. That's Chris Pandasam against Damon McMill. <laughs> the uh, grey shirt for uh, Vandersam now out of uh, Wanganui. And uh, McMill in the left hander from Australia and Melbourne. From uh, Melbourne, although uh, he's staying here for a little bit longer, unlike uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe, who is in theory flying back to his home in uh, Melbourne, just outside of Melbourne, on Sunday. Whether or not he can actually do that, well, that's a different story. So we may have another game completed. Another set, that is. Uh, let's just take a look at that on the second court. We'll keep you up to date with both courts. In the meantime, you can, if you want to see the complete match on court six, uh, you can tune in to that one on YouTube as well. But in the meantime, it is a lengthy one between Joe Smythe and Leo Fatialofa. Leo Fatialofa been out of uh, competition play for a little while. He's been finishing off the last, last year at Auckland Grammar. We'll have to check in on that one. But in the meantime, it is... Well, Fadi Alofa won the first 11-9. Joe Smythe, the second 12-10. Fadi Alofa, the third 11-6. And now Smythe, the fourth 11-9. So we're going to the fifth in that particular match. In the meantime, on the, the main court, Chris Van der Sam taking the uh, uh, couple-point lead. And uh, a player who's been ranked around about 150 in the world right now well, because of work commitments uh, mainly and uh, it's a lack of tournament play. He is uh, certainly ranked quite a lot lower than he possibly could be. And he does have a PSA world ranking. It's just that it happens to be 509, whereas the ability is certainly a lot higher than that. And uh, Damon McMillan, who's played a few tournaments around the country. Pam Muir, I know, he played Browns Bay as well, and I think possibly another one. And uh, McMillan is, uh, he's got a ranking of 347. So, quick run of points there to Van der Sam, and one back now for Damon McMillan. Players merging and coming in to watch some of these matches. Leo Fadialofa with his own particular style, as as always. And uh, taking on Joe Smythe, one of the real workhorses out of the Bay of Plenty. Leo, just casual athlete who could be good at any sport. In the meantime, on this main court, it's Van der Sam, 6-1. And it does everything efficient, just like that drop shot there off the backhand. You can see Sean Wiggins sitting there. Yeah, who else we can spot? There's uh, Luanda Tulisi, I think he's chatting to Anthony Leffer, who uh, otherwise would have, no doubt, been playing in this tournament, but has had uh, some major injuries which he's had to try and sort out. He was having surgery at some stage. Careful. He's going to get given a, a stroke on that. He's not careful. So 9-1. And they're looking good, Chris Van Sam. The winner of this match takes on Evan Williams. And uh, that'll certainly be interesting. Evan and uh, Van der Sam played, I believe it was in Pam Muir a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Evan coming through that one, albeit that the first game was 13-11 or 12-10. Certainly very close. And that match, uh, if it does come true tomorrow, well, the winner of this one will take on Evan Williams at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. Plenty of good matches tomorrow. Uh, potentially, players all get to play twice if you're a winner. And a very quick 11, make that 10-1 preempting the next point. And 
Didn't need to say or do too much because it came very quickly, and that's 11 1 the first game to Van der Sam against the Australian lefty Damon McMillan. You can see Chris van der Sam on the court, really. He uh, won the first 11-1 against Damon McMillan. Earlier winners today, Mason Smales, Benjamin Ratcliffe, Abby Palmer over Natalie Says. It was Zach Miller over Matt Lucente and Finn Trimble in four over Glenn Templeton. On the other court, we had uh, wins to Sarah Cardwell, Alex Hayden, the two Australians, Lana Harrison, Benjamin Adams. And in the meantime, on the second court, it is Leo Fatialofa against Joe Smythe. Some very good squash going on. This is just the first round. Wait until you get to tomorrow with the second round and also quarters for the men anyway. We've just seen the ball start to fade away a little bit in the uh, forehand corner in particular on this main court. And a little bit of a head shake saying, no, I didn't really like that one there from Chris Van der Sam. Finds himself down three love. A little bit of a turnaround. So, just, again, it's that forehand corner. If you can hit deep at the moment, particularly as it's getting a bit cooler, what are we, 7.30ish? So, 7.30ish. Uh, it's quite cool around the courts. If you can hit deep, you're going to do well. Oh, nice. Great angle. Just, I wouldn't call it a slap, but just punched it there across court. Ball staying low and no chance for... Macmillan to actually get the ball back. rally from both players so far. This is the first round at the Barford and Thompson Auckland Open. Had the racket almost ready for a lift, instead drove through the ball to uh, McMillan. Oh, good play, good reach from uh, Van der Sam. And arguably the best rally of uh, this match so far ends up with the point going to Van der Sam. Great to have people around the country joining us. I know we've got the Manawatu special and possibly a few others in the South Island. So, 
Oh, nice change of the direction there. Just held the ball so well, the left-handed Australian. And Van der Sam trying to take the pace off and then driving this one down the wall, but recovered nicely. Oh, boy, a good point. The last couple of points have been very good for the left-handed Australian. Controlling the point well as McMillan. Ooh, that one just stays in somehow. And it looks as though it's over with Fatih Lofer against Joe Smythe. And we'll just update you on the winner of that particular match. It's hard to tell, they're both walking off. And Joe Smythe. It was a tough one. Those two know each other's play very well. As we just look at this match here, as uh, Chris van der Sam comes back very nicely, it was a win to Joe Smythe, 11 6 in the fifth. So, one heck of a lengthy contest between those two players. Smythe has been competing a lot compared to Leo Fariolofa, who hasn't. In fact, almost surprising that he uh, decided to enter this particular tournament. So well done there to Joe Smythe from the Bay of Plenty. In the meantime, Chris van der Sam has brought himself back into this match. A good effort there. As we're about to see Caitlin Watts onto the court against uh, Grace Heimers from Christchurch. A powerful hitter. And Watts has just done so well in uh, the three tournaments that she's played in, the Challenger tournaments that is, winning all three of them and all three of them against Emma Miller. Yeah, that's a good shot. Let's see after. Asking for a let. I don't think you're going to get that one, Chris. A nice uh, fight back into uh, this particular game. You see Mason smiles there in the crowd looking very catch, but you know, what else would you expect? So let's now see if we can come back. Chris, he's uh, asking for a check on that ball. And getting nothing back from the refs. Sure of that one that he was getting a point going his direction. So what we need to see is from Vanderson a bit more depth on his shots. Yeah, not up on that one. And uh, as we say, a bit more depth. He does do a great drop shot. But if he can just push it into the court, we're seeing the ball fade away a little bit as it gets cooler. His feet there, a little bit of a shuffle. Good. Ooh. And <laughs> you can see there that uh, Damon McMillan not overly happy with that one, put himself in a bad position and the stroke, so we're at eight apiece. Firstly, Van der Sam took the pace off the ball as he crossed court. And it was retrieved by McMillan, but then stabbing the ball down the uh, backhand wall worked very nicely. And not quite ready on the serve there, McMillan. There you go, very low to the ground. Oh, it's got a change of direction. Oh, good running. Yeah. And. Good running from McMillan, but uh, Van der Sam able to punch that one across out of the reach of McMillan. And now a game point. It's been a struggle, though, in this game. Oh, saves one.
Oh, good play from McMillan. Held its ground nicely. A little bit of a look of his opponent and sort of uh, saying, well, I won that one. I made you run. As we get to 10 apiece and be a lot of scrambling there from Van der Sam. That good play from McMillan. Uh, good to see... Oh, drawn away. Good to see the uh, sponsors here tonight, Barfoot and Thompson. Uh, a couple of them players here at the North Shore Squash Club. Not sure whether they'd want to get out on the court against uh, either Damon McMillan or Chris Van der Sam. So it's game ball again in the second game for Van der Sam. See if he can take advantage. That's a better serve. Right, nice and deep. Yep, and uh, the stroke on that one yeah, just didn't get out of the way, did McMillan. So two games to love. Chris Van der Sam out of uh, Fonganui at the moment. 11-1 and 12-10 looking to go through to the second round where he'll take on the top seed, Evan Williams. Van der Sam with a good start in this, the third. Oh, nice change of direction. McMillan's certainly very quick around the court, the left-hander. <laughs> Look how close that Van der Sam was to the racket. He was very close to it there. And he was almost tempting McMillan to have a go with him so close. Remembering the winner of this particular match goes through to take on Evan Williams in the second round. That'll be at 1.30. So we're using the lift now, although, oh, Van der Sam, very tall player. Not quite as tall as, uh, say, Finn Trimble or probably about equal with uh, Glenn Templeton. And good to have uh, quite a few people here playing on the other courts as well. And that one out. And with the other divisions, certainly we're expecting a big crowd for the final on Sunday. But also for tomorrow, been a very busy day. Potentially two matches each for players. Well, there will be two matches each for the players who win. 
And the finals, well, men's final 1.30 on Sunday. They'll be on Sky Pop-Up as well. I think it's on uh, Sky Pop-Up 50, make that 60. And the women's final on Sunday, 12.30. Men's final, 1.30. So plenty of good uh, squash. Looking at the quarterfinals, make that the semifinals on Saturday. 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock for the women. For the men, still a bit later on in the day after that. We're looking at 5 and 6 p.m. So basically uh, four hours of uh, semi-finals coming up on the Saturday. And uh, Chris van der Sam, not overly happy about that one, but he still has a 6-1 lead in this, the third. See what he can do on this one. That's They're just checking whether that actually made it over the 10. Wasn't a significant noise, it was tight. And Vandersam continues his lead, wanting to wrap this up in a three. And on the other court, it is uh, Caitlin Watts, looking very strong, as we'd expect. Bit of a tough one there for uh, Grossheimers. with uh, Watts winning the first 11-3. In the meantime, a point back for the lefty from Melbourne, Damon McMillan, been in New Zealand for, I think it's three, maybe four weeks. Ooh, I believe that McMillan may be playing the Northland Open in a couple of weeks. Oh, great recovery. Oh, and then he mucked it up. Yeah, wanted to throw his racket. You probably could after that one. But McMillan playing the Northland Open. That is in uh, two weeks' time in Whangarei. That would be great. Uh, again, Williams is in that. Uh, majority of New Zealand domestic players in that particular tournament for the men. And that uh, is great news. It would be great for the people of Whangarei to see some top-quality squash. As people just wandering in to take a look at the squash tonight. And 10-3. Plenty of match balls. What was that, Chris? It was a good winner. Well, it was a little bit of a flat one there to finish off on, but a real slap at it, and it came off. So uh, a straight game a victory. 11-1, 12-10, 11-3 to Chris Foundersam. And a good win to the player from, uh, well, now located in Wanganui. And victory to take him through there as Caitlin Watts continues against Grace Heimers on the other court. They're coming up very shortly on this particular court. It will be, in fact, about 10 minutes away. It'll be Lance Bidos against Wills Donnelly.
Well, coming up with the penultimate match on this court tonight, it is Lance Bidos. He is in the blue. You can't see him on the court just yet. Where has he gone? Somewhere. Uh, he'll be back on the court very shortly. Commonwealth Games rep was Lance uh, 2018 on the Gold Coast. And he's up against Wills Donnelly. And you can see Wills Donnelly out on the court right now in the black. Very good at running and counter-punching. And uh, Luamba Chalisi was with me. And uh, Luamba, you're uh, expecting a good contest from these two? I mean, we're going to hear a lot of it because uh, Lance is that sort of person. He does like to talk his way through a match, right? Yeah, uh, definitely known for his uh, antics on court. Um. And we're just getting a little adjustment from the mic. You've got to almost swallow it there, Luamba. There you're doing good. Difficulty. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely known for his antics on court, um, which should make this game quite interesting. He's going to use all the tactics he's learned uh, on the tour in the past to try and win this match. Well, I mean, he um, was coaching up in uh, the US uh, not so long ago, and now um, he's a real estate agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bounced around a few jobs. Um, seems like he's finally potentially going to uh, be settled in his real estate job now, which is good to see, so he's doing well. Yeah, that's good uh, for... Uh, I mean, the thing is the transition from an athlete to, you know, as a player, a sports person to, I'll call it a real job, um, and that's probably the wrong way of calling it. It's, it's, quite, it's quite difficult because you aren't too sure. You're used to regimented training and you're used to travel and you're used to certain things and then to get into an almost nine to five type environment isn't, isn't easy. I mean, for you, you're probably not thinking about it yet. You're only 22, but have you ever thought about your future? Um... Yeah, no, not yes yet. And no, not really, yeah. I'm kind of uh, one of those squash players that's just kind of just sees squash and then just going to worry about the future <laughs> later. Uh, well, at 22, it's not so bad yeah, at the moment. Yeah, yeah not at the moment. Um, my brother's probably more lean towards his future. Obviously, he's been to uni and he's actually almost finished. Um, okay. What's, uh, so what's Timo doing? Uh, he's doing a chem uh, degree in chemistry. So a oh, Bachelor of Science majoring in chemistry. Okay, so a mad yeah. scientist coming up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're in uh, the... There we uh, go. Lance has already given uh, the ref a dirty look. <laughs> and the thumbs up and a dirty look. That's uh, typical of Lance. So we're only in the fourth point, and uh, Wills Donnelly, he's had a couple of great uh, tournaments. Where was it that he uh, beat Joel? I think that was at Royal Oak, was it? Royal Oak, uh, PSA Satellite, yep. And he actually almost took me out as well. He was up 2-1 in that. Yeah. Um, definitely one of his best tournaments this year. He's had some good results. Um, so, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see how far he can get in this tournament. Um, well, he had a good result here. I think it was quarterfinals at the uh, NZ Champs last year on this court, I think it was, or something similar that he really pushed a few people. We Such good results in that tournament anyway. I mean, you made the final in five, and you probably don't want to talk about that too much. <laughs> Yeah, one yeah. of those things. Don't really want to have flash flashbacks of that match. But well, uh, it was, you know, in all fairness, it was a very good competitive match. I mean, you guys just went at it, you and Evan Williams, from the word go. There was no sort of, there was no, I oh, will just fade in and fade out. It was just go for it, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, we've had quite a competitive rivalry uh, the last year or so. Um, and we had played two weeks prior to that, so... Both of us, yeah, we're just really keen to fire up and get straight into it from the get-go, which is what happened. And, uh, yeah, it was a good match. Um, well, yeah. There we go. Both players questioning now. What do you think about that on yeah, the replay? I think just a lack of effort from Lance there. Maybe if he tried a little bit harder to actually go to the ball. Yeah, then the got let. Yeah. referees might have sort of said, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting because you can never count Lance out. That's the thing. He will uh, pull shots just like that out yeah. of the bag, even if he's down. So um, it'll be interesting to see how uh, Wills can counter the momentum shifts of this match. Well, that's what you do get with Lance. Also, Zach Miller's very similar yeah, as well. Yeah, very similar. Just, you yeah. don't feel comfortable you even when you're ahead. Yeah, and it's tough like out there when, you're, when you can't get settled and you can't play your game. Um, it's actually really hard to to win matches like that. Um, and obviously these two know each other quite well. Lance used to coach Wills when he was at XL, when they were both at XL. So, um, yeah, definitely uh, good mates off the court, which may even make it difficult for, for Wills to try and 
really get this over the line as well. Oh, that's a better shot. Very nice shot there. So he's doing well, staying in front, trying not to give Lance too much around the middle of the court at the moment, which is uh, the right thing to do. I think Wills has improved a lot on his volley, volley drops um, high in the air and around the middle, so he's going to use that to his advantage this game, definitely. I mean, certainly in the last 18 months, uh, Wills, his, his overall game has improved. Uh, obviously, there's a little bit of age. He's not exactly old either. But he's uh, certainly seen his game improve, but he's added more dimensions to it. Oh, that's nice. Uh, the one, but for you, having the Australians come over for this uh, tournament, I think is about uh, five of them, or thereabouts, in the men's draw. Uh, that's good. You know, I, I was watching everybody before the matches started. Everybody's just chatting and catching up. So that, that's just quite a nice social thing as well as a competitive thing coming up. Yeah, it's quite interesting actually. Um, we we all kind of are similar ages anyway, uh, apart from Reese, who is a little bit older. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've grown up playing Nick a lot in juniors um, and a couple of PSA matches in seniors. Um, same with the rest of the uh, the crew in New Zealand. So yeah, there's there's a friendship there, but there's also a rivalry on court, um, which is quite cool. And because we haven't seen them in a couple of years, obviously because of COVID, we're a year and a half, um, it is almost like a reunion for us. Yeah. Um, and it's some fresh players as well, fresh competitors. Is, yeah, and it's exciting for both both sides of the field, I think. When it's on court, however. Oh, that's a nice play. You see how he just nice. rolled his wrist on that to take the pace off. Very nice, yeah. The old fan there from uh, <laughs> yeah. Lance. There Quite a go. nice lob, actually. That was a yeah. very decent shot watching the replay just there. And so, yeah, and this, this is where Wills needs to be really careful. Yeah. Lance can uh, pounce back from these uh, kind of point deficits at the start. So, Wills needs to keep his focus, stay tight, make the rallies long. Uh, just letting people know that on the other court, we do have uh, Emma Miller up against Dewey Bide. And there'll be a bit of running there from Dewey. She's uh, very much a uh, competitor when it comes to uh, zooming around the court, and I think that's the best way of describing it. She zooms around the court. Of course, Emma Miller has been a beaten finalist to uh, Caitlin Watts three times in the challenges around the country. And uh, good to see Dewey on the court. She's a neuro neuro uh, physio which is a pretty advanced job <laughs> as uh, a player that she is. And uh, good to see her on the court. In the meantime, we'll just report that uh, Caitlin Watts defeated Grace Heimers. A little bit of a comeback in the third from uh, Heimers as Watts uh, ran out the winner in the end uh, in straight. It was 11-3, 11-5, 11-7. So uh, good effort there for Thomas to come back a little bit. But in the end, Caitlin Watts winning. Oh, what do you think about that shot there, uh, Luamba? It's uh, quite nice from uh, Wills Donnelly. Here we go on the uh, watch the winner here. Yeah, it's very nice. I think a little bit of a guess there from Lance, but it was good that uh, Wills kind of picked up on it last second and flipped it across. A bit of slicage. Yeah. Oh. Another, another top spin there from Lance. He's, he is liking those backhand top yeah. spins. But you don't see that from too many players. The, the top spin shot isn't used as much as, say, a slice. Would that be correct? Yeah, definitely. You don't see it much in squash. That's no, I mean, it's a tennis shot. Um, yeah. A lot, most players, or all players that play it, are obviously very skilled with the racket. Um, very risky shot. High risk, high reward, as they say. Um, not really my style of game, as most people know. <laughs> uh, but I do like to, to see it. And Wills Donnelly is recovering all these balls somehow. There's almost a... And there you go, there's that shot again across court. Well, and in the first game, I mean, Lance was in it. But just... Uh, I, I think it's probably the, the lack of big match practice and uh, other things on his mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely a bit of uh, lack of match play there from Lance, but... <laughs> he's he's going to do everything he can to come back. You can see Jordan Tiplady there coaching uh, Lance, giving him his wise words. Uh, I don't think I've ever watched that guy play and not have a five-setter, so he's probably just <laughs> telling Lance to take it to five. And, and we've got Leper as well, the yeah. big fro. The big fro is in coaching 
Wills. Um, well, Anthony Lepper, is, uh, has he had his knee surgery or something? I think he was that was coming up, some operation. He had hips, hip surgery. Oh, hip surgery. Yeah. Definitely um, a young guy too. Yeah, so he he's back. I think he's just back training in the last week or so. Um, so, yeah, he, he'll be looking to get, get back into it soon. Um, hopefully before Nationals, if not definitely uh, the Howick tournament, maybe some Aussie tournaments as well for him. So there's a few few tournaments lined up for him when yeah. he comes back, uh, and he'll be he'll be itching to get back on court for sure. All right, we'll come back with the second game in just a moment between Will Stonley and Lars Beatles. So the first game, 11-8 to Wills Donnelly over Lance Beatles. And I, I think, Luamba, this probably what we expected, that Wills, just with his consistency of matches, uh, earning that first game. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, an expected first game to Wills. Lance didn't make it uh, easy for him, but yeah, he just stayed, stayed too solid towards the end. And, uh, I think Lance is just going to be, in the nicest possible way, annoying enough in each game that... Wills will just have to keep on his game a little bit. If he lets it slip, then maybe Lance will just up the tempo a bit more and come back. Yeah, I think Lance is definitely going to look for a few lapses in concentration from Wills, and he's going to feed off that. So we'll see how uh, Wills goes in this game. Staying low, jammed into the uh, wall and the floor. What I've noticed, uh, Luamba, is in the last few games, this has got a little bit colder this evening, particularly in the forehand corner. The ball's died a little bit. So perhaps a little bit more depth would be... Oh, that one's out. A little bit more depth in the ball would uh, help both players. Yeah, definitely a contrast from Nationals last year. <laughs> Oh, that was just a there we sweat go. Just fest. as you said, uh, Dave. All right, I got one right. Forehand, <laughs> well, and he's it, done it. It seemed to be the forehand corner more than the backhand. Whether or not it was just uh, putting it in that corner, I'm not sure. Uh, certainly speaking to uh, Benjamin Ratcliffe, one of the Australians, he said the court initially when he was playing was a very, very quick court, very true court. But then as, as we start to get a bit colder, um, yeah, it's, it's just lost a little bit of its zing, I think. So Lance has read that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he read that one well. Read it well. I think he was quite happy as well that he didn't have to race after it. Oh, that Very was a nice kill there. It was solid, wasn't it? That is uh, something you see on the PSA. Circuit, more higher up, maybe in the, the Alguna matches. Put him oh. a star for a sal there on the forehand from Lance. Well, we're looking uh, forward to, albeit that it's going to be very early in the morning tomorrow, Paul Cole against uh, Tarek Momin. That will probably be about 5.15 a.m. <laughs> New Zealand time, which is something I'm not looking forward to getting <laughs> up to, but I have to. Yeah, not ideal. Um, luckily, you can got, a, replay. got a squash TV account. Yep, <laughs> yep. on the replay. If you don't have a squash TV account out there, kids, get your parents to get one for you. <laughs> yeah, it's been good on the Facebook, but then when it gets to the semi-finals, it goes to Sky or Squash TV. Yeah, there's been some very interesting matches um, in that tournament. A couple of ups yeah. upsets. Um, but yeah, I guess for the players, um, or I guess I can speak on behalf of the players, it's good for us to have a tournament like that kind of running through the, our own tournament as well. Because for me, definitely, from watching squash, I definitely find I play better. I don't know why. 
Um, but I think it's the same for a lot of squash players. Um, oh, nice. Nice angle there from the volley. Yeah, there's been uh, some really interesting matches. We did see Osal go down to uh, Fares uh, in five today, albeit that that match was taken indoors because of humidity. And then the referee, there was a medical emergency. I'm not totally sure exactly what happened, but it was yep. delayed and then went for a long time anyway. Good, yeah. So I think it was 132 minutes or yep. something total because there was a 20 to 30 minute break. Um, yeah, because something happened to the video ref. Yeah. Um, which must be tough. I think it was 11 10 in the first, and then they yeah. had a 20 minute break. So imagine that. Imagine. Oh, that's kind of weird. It is, yeah. It would be a weird thing to, to have to go through. Um, but it's just what you've got to expect. And then there was another long match. I mean, Joel Mark, he has long matches a lot. He's yeah. very competitive, He's very isn't he? Known. Because you would have played not against him, but you played against Wales at the World Champs in 2019, I think. I don't think we played yeah, Wales, no. It was we, against um, Scotland. Yeah, maybe. we ended up losing to Scotland. We played England um, right. and lost to England, so we were able. We ended up playing Spain in the fifth and okay. sixth, and Wales played uh, Scotland third and fourth. Right. Yeah. I so uh, you know they, they've got a solid, solid team, man. But uh, yeah, you know, Joel, solid. They ended up coming third in that tournament. Yeah. Yeah, because Joel's one of those competitors that who is gritty. Yeah, <laughs> and actually, I I remember watching him play Tarek Moman in the semis, I think. And I think he won 12 10 in the fifth, but it was ridiculous. Like, yeah. the balls they were both getting back. And obviously, you know, Tarek likes to put it in that uh, front left off the backhand volley. And I was actually sitting on the backhand side on the glass. And I could just see how short the ball is. Like, you don't understand how much different it is on the, right. on the live stream or on the sh It, it video. slows it down a little it's bit, doesn't lot, it? Yeah, it actually is a lot quicker and a lot shorter when you watch it live. Um, and watching Joel pick up those pulls like it was nothing was absolutely ridiculous, yeah. So there was something like that being around. I mean, that was 2019, and you're, you know, you're a year or so older now, but also just your experience. Uh, that's got to make you feel. There we go. The second game there, just a little bit easier for uh, Wills Donnelly. But your experience since then, and having been in that team environment and watching all those top players, the Egyptians, whoever else, and uh, the English, everybody, that must have helped you, you know, mature and, and become a better player. Yeah, definitely. I think. Um yeah, just watching those top players, um, especially a lot of them were guys that I grew up kind of idolising in yep. terms of squash. So it was good to see them live. Definitely an experience and definitely helped, has helped with my squash so far and helped me mature, yeah. Well, just letting you know about that uh, women's match, which is on the second court. And, um, well, as we expected, Dewey Byatt is um, competitive, just really, really competitive. And uh, she really had a go at... Uh, at Emma Miller, eventually Miller winning 15-13. And uh, Bright's just one of those players who will just run everything down, may not have the winning strokes. So Emma Miller having a bit of a struggle there, but took the first game. And uh, remembering that there is still another match on that court afterwards. Jessica Turnbull, the second seed, ranked 66 in the world against Katie Templeton out of Caddy Caddy. And uh, then on the main court, after this match between Lance Bedos and Wills Donnelly, it's Ella Lash, the 15-year-old, up against Rebecca Barnett, who was one of New Zealand's best juniors. In fact, I think she did win the junior title a few years ago, been overseas recently. But in the meantime, Wills Donnelly on the court against uh, Lance Bedos. Wills has uh, been playing pretty well there, uh, Luamba, and uh, you'd have to give him plenty of credit. I mean, you know, we've spoken about Lance, how he can come back, but at the moment, Wills looking... Pretty good to go through uh, into the next round. Yeah, I think if, if these guys were to play a year or so, six months ago, um, kind of just before, just before COVID last year, it would have been a different story. Um, but Wills has definitely cleaned up um, parts of his game, and he's definitely a, a much more solid player. What do you say, he's fitter as well? Player. Um, <laughs> you better I mean, say he yes. Wasn't, he wasn't unfit no. last year. I just think... He's, he's fitter in the sense that he can handle a higher intensity right. for a longer period of time. Um, so, yeah, I guess he, he is fitter. Um, I'm not sure how much fitter he'd be, but he definitely seems to make less errors and make smarter decisions under pressure for a longer period of time more consistently. Um, yeah. Well, on the court now, the winner of this match uh, between Lance and uh, Wills will go on, go on to take on the fifth seed. Nicholas Calvert, who 
Evan Williams said was uh, Nick Calvert, you know, quite a tough competitor. He and uh, Reese Dowling, a little bit older. And uh, they're both tough competitors. It could come through quite nicely in the draw. Let's continue. But in the meantime, Wills Donnelly with that two points to love. That will be a very interesting match, actually, um, if, if Wills does end up getting through. I mean, if both, either or, even if Lance get, does get through this match as well, I think that could be a very oh, interesting nice. match up as well. Nice boast. Um, <laughs> held just enough there. Lance is uh, known for his kind of windy forehand, right? Uh, which creates a nice hold, nice bit of deception. Looks like he's going to hit it hard, and he can actually do anything off it. Definitely one of his trademark shots when he was a pro player. Also yet to see a backhand flick from Lance, I believe. He may have tried it, but I haven't seen oh, the taxi go. yet. Quite disappointing, actually. We've seen the fan, as you called it, where he sort of just rolls his wrist the at, the, at the last moment and the ball just has nothing on it to come back. So interesting, this rally. Just taking the pace off both players. It's tight, squeeze. Very nice oh. drop. Great touch. He's just playing good patterns here. Squeezing the the kind of low kill and then playing that nice touch on the backhand drop. Very nice pattern. He's read that as well. It's a nice rally. Yeah, that's that's good play from uh, Wills in the end. I think he... Uh, Actually, clipped the tin on that one there, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just, I was about to say just, it was a great point. It, it looked like a great shot, actually. It looked like a winning <laughs> shot there. Oh, to be corrected. <laughs> I didn't hear Close it. Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> yeah. It's that hold boast again. It's such a good working boast. He winds up like he's going to play a, a shutout drive, and then he. Changes last nice. second. That's a nice shot to finish nice to clean with. up from Wells. So yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of volley winners here from Wells. He just seems to have cleaned up that area of the court where he's he's, he's putting it in when he gets a loose shot around the middle, uh, which actually makes a huge difference. Being someone playing him, because even if you can end up getting that back, you're going to be under under the pump for the rest of the rally. Great shot. Now we've seen uh, Emma Miller take the second game. Quite got a score on that one just yet. We'll just check that one out. Uh, she took the first 15-13 against Dewey Bide. And we'll take a look through. Let's see what she got that uh, second game on. I think it was 10-7. Uh, make that 11-7. And uh, so, yeah, just looking there. She's certainly having to battle. So 15-13 the first and 11-7 the second Emma Miller. The top-ranked New Zealander domestically. Of course, Joelle King ranked at number eight in the world. Let's see what Lance can do on this one. Oh, the turnaround. Do a lot of work as Lance. And yeah, it wasn't up. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking he would have claimed it. He hundred percent would have claimed that. Yeah, I was thinking. I'm sure that was not up, but they're still playing. <laughs> After getting that 10 wrong, I wasn't too sure. So 9-3 uh, lead here for Wills. Looks like uh, he, he will probably take this away. Yeah, it's been an impressive performance by Wills Donnelly. He's kept pretty steady, and there we go with uh, the match point match ball. There you go, nice play. And uh, Lawamba, what would you say about Will Stonley in this match? Just keep consistent? Yeah, just consistent, consistently solid, I would right. say. Um, definitely watch this space. Uh, he'll have a, have a nice match tomorrow against uh, Nick Calvert from Australia, so definitely tune in for that. Uh, Nick's a very solid player as well, so it'll be very interesting to see who can come out on top. And that match will be 2.15 on this court, on the show court. And the Wills Donnelly against Nicholas Calvert, the fifth seed. It should be a good one to watch, uh, Luwamba. And uh, we'll let you go. 
And just checking on who you play tomorrow, let's just check on, you're going to take on, who are you going to take on? Uh, Zach Miller? Zach Miller. How many yeah. times have you ever played him recently? <laughs> About 500 in the last yeah. year or so. Yeah. yeah. So. Did you um, play him in uh, the Waikato Open? No, that was Timwa. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do know the difference actually. between you. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I played him in Pamuor two right. weeks ago, um, and Timwa played in Waikato yeah. Open, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what he's like. He's, he's, he's yeah. similar to Lance in the way that... Even if you think you've won, it's probably not best yep. to think you've won until you really have. He is known for dropping sets come, like quite easily yeah. and then coming back and winning yeah. in four, winning in five, you know. So, um, yeah, you can never, ever take him for granted because <laughs> um, he will beat you if you do. Yeah, he's, he's one of those players. So we're coming back in about 15 minutes with the last match on this court. That'll be Ella Lash against Rebecca Barnett. Thank you very much to Luamba Chalisi. We'll let you go and uh, prepare for Zach Miller tomorrow. Thanks for having me, Dave. No worries.
But we're down to the last matches of day one of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open here at the North Shore Squash Club. And you can see on court there, Ella Lash, the left-hander, 15-year-old from the North Shore, well, from the North Shore, as in suburbs, but playing out of Belmont, up against Rebecca Barnett, and from the Royal Oak Club. And Barnett, been away for quite a while, out of New Zealand. She was one of New Zealand's best juniors for a while. And she did quite well when she came back and played the tournament, the challenger at Royal Oak, which made the semi-finals or something like that. Yes, close to it. And uh, Ella Lash, uh, she had a good tournament recently uh, against, uh, I think it was against Emma Miller, where she put in a good performance, but still very young. And just comes down to Barnett and just match fix, um, that match fitness. We're getting there. Spit it out. We'll get there completely in the end. Uh, been quite a long day of uh, seven or eight matches. But this is the eighth match, and on the other court we do have Jessica Turnbull, the second seed up against Katie Templeton. We'll go through all the matches and all the results very shortly. And get underway here. These two players. Good couple of rallies so far. No lid on that one. As uh, Barnett just checking. And uh, no, it wasn't coming her way. And Ella Lash. Let's see what she can do with the serve. Down love two, and are now 2 4 winning the last four points. Let's see what Barnett can do. She'll have to be careful, don't give Lash the opportunities. And there we go, one back. Steadiness by Ella Lash, left-hander. Certainly her game is maturing. The more matches she plays against the older, more experienced opponents. Plenty for her to uh, look forward to. And just check on her world ranking. It's, it's really improved because of these matches and because of uh, how much she's played. Ella Lash, uh, 252 at the present time. So a good world ranking. And she's uh, be turning 16 in September. So plenty of time for her to develop, and great that she's a left-hander. Really does help. Just something a little bit different for players to come up against. Careful, Lash. You know, she's got to be steady. It's uh, great to see her doing so well. So, three point buffer at the moment as we await Ella Lash for her serve. Let's see, just a simple serve. Barnett move around the court quite a bit at the moment. Real whippy shots from Ella Lash. 
very strong wrist. Good reach. Uh, just using a bit of experience to stay there. Good variety. Every now and then she does like to power through the ball. And uh, these players soon recognize if you put it deep on these courts, it does start to fade a little bit. I'd just like to say thank you to uh, a number of people who have helped out with commentary. That great to have people like Tim Wan and Luamba Chalisi. We've had Benjamin Ratcliffe with us. And others as we've gone through commentary today. Been a busy day. And uh, great to have uh, everybody contributing. Mason Smales there as well. He's won the only five gamer on this first day. That was over Elijah Thomas, who's coming back from an ankle injury. And just checking there, the first 11-6, but on the other court, as we speak, 11-2, the first game to uh, Jessica Turnbull. Expect that she's 66 in the world up against uh, Katie Templeton, who has um, PSA ranking. It's still a junior, and uh, just turned ball, plenty of experience. Won a couple of uh, PSA challenges around Australia. Let's see what she can do in this particular tournament. She's the second seed. And the player's back on court. Ella Lash taking the first 11-6. Really matured as a player, albeit that she's still just 15 years old. Can't expect too much. And the game has got stronger and stronger under Manu Yam. He's around somewhere. Uh, I've seen him wandering around. He'll be keeping track of what's going on here in this particular match. Goodness knows how many players he actually has in this tournament. One of the, the coaches with many, many hats as such. Steady rally from both players here. Oh, chopping under the ball was Alalash and uh, Barnett not able to reach that one. Remembering that tomorrow we start from at midday. It's the men's second round of contests with the women's quarterfinals a little bit later on. So let's have a look at tomorrow's matches starting from midday on court seven. This one, it's Mason Smales against uh, Timo Chalisi. That'll be fun. On the other court, it's Reese Dowling against uh, Benjamin Adams. And looking at the rest of the matches, uh, on court seven, this particular one, Mason Smiles against Timo Tulisi. Then seventh seed, Joel Ascot against Benjamin Ratcliffe from Australia. Top seed, Evan Williams against uh, Chris van der Sam, who had a straight game win. And then it's Nicholas Calvert against Wills Donnelly. Before we get into the women's quarterfinals, Lana Harrison against Abby Palmer. Sarah Cardwell against uh, Alex Hayden, two Aussies there. Emma Miller against Caitlin Watts. On the other court, uh, starting from midday, as we mentioned, Reese Dowling against Benjamin Adams. Joe Smythe against Joseph White, the second seed from Australia. Finn Trimble against Sean Wigan. Zach Miller against Lawanda Chalisi. Uh, should be another good contest there. So plenty of great matches tomorrow. Of course, the men's quarterfinals go right into 
Well, I think it's 10 p.m. The last match will be scheduled at 9.15, so allow 45. We could be here quite late tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be a long day, folks. Hopefully you can tune in and enjoy it. As Rebecca Barnett leads the second game at 5-2. And looking quite stable and established in this uh, particular game. And uh, Lance just gone off the board a little bit as we see... And uh, as we see, Lance just picking up the tempo. Uh, I mean, Barnett picking up the tempo. Did you get it? Yes, you did. She picked. No, she didn't. <laughs> it was almost as she pick it up. And not quite in the end. So that is Becca Barnett, 6 3. Which is an interesting one. serve here, 8-4 up. Last lifted shot from Malalash, then flicks that one through. Big wipers swing on that one. And let's try and keep it to the back of the court. Oh, there's a interesting shot selection there from Rebecca Barnett. It came off in the end. 9-4. Oh, we're not going to have straight games if... Uh, isn't it? Oh, no. oh, gee. Great boast from uh, Ella Lash. Uh, she hit through it nicely, quite short on the boast, and uh, not much pace on it. It's a good play. Uh, Barnett likes to hit through the ball. Oh. <laughs> a little bit of a turn, and uh, just flicking the racket onto it. There's the mistake. As we go to one game each, Rebecca Barnett against Ella Lash. It is 11-6 the first to Ella Lash, but 11-5 the second to Rebecca Barnett. And we can just give you a bit of an update on the other court. That it is Jessica Turnbull, the second seed from Australia. She won the first 11-2, the second 11 Three and up five love in the third. She is ranked 66 in the world. So a bit of a tough a draw there for Katie Templeton. And for Jessica Turnbull, if uh, she continues winning like this, she will go through to the quarterfinals as it is in the women's draw. 16-player draw. And uh, she will take on the winner of Alalash against Rebecca Barnett. So it could be really interesting for uh, Turnbull. Uh, just who she'll take on. We shall see as we get back to Rebecca Barnett and Alalash in just a minute. It is a one game apiece in this women's match. The first round of the Barfoot and Thompson Auckland Open 2021. And you can see the score there. 
Lash against Barnett. Could be quite an interesting finish. We had no idea who was going to win. It was Lash starting very well. And now Barnett's just picked up the pace, wanting to keep moving. Not much of a settled time in between points. She loves it. Going fast and furious. So Lash is going to have to chat to someone. And uh, Mano Yam down there saying, yes, he is there. He needs to have a chat to Mano and come up with a different tactic. Try and slow the, down, slow the match down a little bit. from Barnett, just using the depth of the court. Oh, now she's having to do a lot of running around at the moment. She get there? No, she didn't get there. the speed that oh <laughs> one stayed low uh, the speed that uh, Barnett likes to play at oh likes to flick through the ball does Barnett and then it was Lash just not giving herself enough space right into the turn playing that one so six two from Barnett, keeping the ball low, taking the pace off after hitting so many powerful shots. And let's just take a, a bit of a look through a couple of other results. As, uh, had no upsets as such, but certainly some interesting matches. Barnett using the lift there. Oh, flick off the feet. And the full range coming through. Oh, but that's much better there from uh, Ella Lash. And uh, the top-ranked New Zealander, and that was uh, Emma Miller, winning her match. It was a toughie. It was uh, Miller defeating Dewey Bide. 15-13, 11-7, 11-8. So a straight game win, albeit that 15-13 is exactly the way you want to start a match. Bide, one of those players who just run. She's like the Energizer Bunny. And uh, Miller having to really refocus in the second and third to win that. Even the second and third was still fairly tight. So Emma Miller, runner-up in the three Challenger events so far this year, through to the uh, quarterfinals. And uh, her draw well, doesn't get any easier because she's up against uh, Caitlin Watts, the woman that's beaten her in all three finals uh, so far this year. So that rivalry continues. That match will be 5.30 tomorrow, so tune in for that one. It should be a very good match to watch. Emma Miller against Caitlin Watts in the uh, quarterfinals tomorrow, the women's draw. In the meantime, it is Barnett who's up 10-5. And the lash with the serve, the youngster. Do get a little, it was actually 10 6 that one. Just checking on the score. Oh. oh, 
And there we go. Not quite getting to the uh, pitch of the ball, the bounce of the ball on that one. And uh, Alavash drops the third. So two games to one for Rebecca Barnett. It was Lash winning the first 11-6 and then Barnett 5-6. and six. Score just hasn't quite ticked over just yet. But uh, well on there to the more experienced opponent. Not uh, exactly old. But she's been away in the UK for a couple of years and then back in New Zealand uh, working in marketing departments, I believe. So just taking a bit of a walk. In the meantime, we'll come back with the fourth game in just a moment. So Ella Lash uh, starting with the first point, but again, just the consistency seems to have dropped away, and Barnett just speeding things up, just loving it. Look at that. If I can hit it hard, I will. And not on that occasion coming off. As uh, the other matches have been completed, and it was uh, Jessica Turnbull winning over Katie Templeton in straight. There we go. Head into the corners. It's going to die, folks. It is a little bit later in the evening now, quarter past nine. A bit cooler by Auckland standards, that is. It's really probably not that bad compared to other parts of the country or some other squash complexes. Oh, yeah, the option was there. It was the best option, but played it probably a little bit too tight. Didn't necessarily have to win it on that shot. That one down low, heading in the join of the court. Don't forget the men's second round matches start from midday tomorrow. Really, really busy day. And uh, for uh, John Fletcher from Squash Auckland, and also for Tyler Duplay from the North Shore Squash Club. Big efforts put in also for Barford and Thompson. Uh, the presentation of the Squash Club is really great. Good signage and uh, welcoming to come in. There are, of course, other divisions going on as well around the club. About six, eight in the men's and uh, five in the women's. And 
it should really be a good night tomorrow night and also Saturday for the semis and then Sunday for the finals from 12.30. Put that up on Sky. Oh, there's a nice shot. So, Becca Barnett has really come up with uh, the goods so far in this game, dropping the first, but uh, since then she's sped it up a little bit. Change of pace. And uh, the winner of this match takes on Jessica Turnbull, the second seed and also the 66th ranked player in the world. So it's not going to get easy. None of these matches get easy, and you almost feel for Emma Miller against Caitlin Watts. Uh, that's the quarterfinal tomorrow. She's got herself back into this rally as Rebecca Barnett from the Royal Oak Club. She's doing just enough to get herself back into position now. And here's the setup. And Ella Lash just found herself out of position as uh, Barnett hit through the ball pretty strong. She's got a lot of power on uh, those shots. Yeah. Oh, that was a little bit unorthodox, but the lift worked. And deep into the court. Use those corners, the ball's fading a little bit. Oh, that one just faded off the uh, front wall. Yeah, Benjamin Ratcliffe, the Australian, said that uh, the court was playing pretty fast, pretty true. Uh, it's what he, uh, he doesn't mind playing on it a little bit. Ooh. And Benjamin Ratcliffe and also Damon McMillan, both coming from Melbourne. And uh, Ratcliffe, in theory, flying back to Melbourne on Sunday, but that's not going to happen. Oh, hitting the joint and bang, it's a roller. So this court, there we go, we've got the score correct now, just coming up 8-6, so nice little two-point buffer, and using that height, using the lift, although it appeared to be a bit of a missed time. You got it? Yeah, it was always a bit of a question. So, Ella Lash not giving up just yet, the 15-year-old. And Barnett has to be careful she doesn't try and finish this off too quickly and let Lash back in. And there you go. That's a nice shot to get two points ahead again from Barnett. That forehand's very strong. Oh. Hit it straight back. Lash is back in the rally. Better shot there from Ella Lash. Again, just keeping herself there. Oh, good play. And a nice shot from Ella Lash uh, taking that ball on the full. Evens it up. Not over yet. Barnett's been trying to get this wrapped up in four. <laughs> Nice play from the 15-year-old. You know, never give up. So, takes that one. Happy with that one, Bennett, to get the decision going away. Looked as though it was always going to go that way. Ooh. Almost just snuck under the line. And admiring the way that Ella Lash has stuck by in this game. Could have easily, easily just about tossed it in. <laughs> and then she does that. So, well done to Ella Lash. Just again, uh, the game ball. Could take it to five. Oh, and 
that was just a bit too tight playing it. The margin's just too tight there. Second game ball for Alalas. You can see the the drive down the wall here. Almost stepped away from it. And okay, so just a little question there. And uh, the score's just a little bit slow to come up on the uh, on the screen here, but that is a game to Alalash and we're going five folks because that is the rule with any sport that the last match always goes five <laughs> we'll be back with the fifth very shortly And Alalash leading the, well, there you go. I'm about to say that she was leading the fifth. Well, she's not anymore. It's one all. And this really is anyone's game. Easy to say that when it's one all. But we have had Alash winning the first and then Barnett relatively easily winning the second and third. And it was Barnett having a couple of points to lead throughout most of the fourth, but El Lash, and you've got to give a lot of credit for the youngster, she's 15 years old, doesn't turn 16 till September, she hung in there and uh, forced a few mistakes, had a couple of winners, what we did see in the second and third was Barnett really uh, just wanting to rush her opponent, oh nice recovery, So the try, when we eventually got there, what happened was Barnett played the ball pretty much back at her body. I think she had 
thought that she'd already won the point earlier. Yeah, she was getting a little bit frustrated. She knew she had the fourth, let alone should have had a lead in this, the uh, fifth. That's a bit of point, though, back into the uh, rear of the court. Use those corners. Ball's fading fast. Oh. And Ella Nash was controlling this point. Oh, that's a great shot. It wasn't just the boast, the angle. It was just the ball came off the uh, front wall and did not bounce at all. Lost that one in the ceiling, didn't want to come down. The unfortunate thing is for Ella Lash is that she'll hit a great winner and the next shot is pretty much in the tin. So she's got to whip those out of a bit of a system. As we said, she's only 15. Manu Yam, coach watching. It wasn't quite a clean shot by Ella Lash, but she's back in the rally. Oh, nice. That's good. Taking the ball on the full and playing through it. And, oh, the errors have just coming into the game now for uh, Barnett and Lash. Happy with that. Again, another good shot to set up that point. It's really getting uh, no bounce back off the front wall. Yep. Nice play again. Ella Lash is uh, really stepping up in this particular fifth game. Okay, so you've heard the discussion there. There was a discussion of whether it was a lead or not, but it's not going to happen. And Ella Lash, just a couple of points away from victory, and certainly a good victory if it does come, because through to the quarterfinals and take on Jessica Turnbull, world number 66 in the second seed. So the first match ball for Ella Lash. Not quite. Nice idea. The shot was on. Execution wasn't quite there. That is a good victory, 11-5 in the end for Ella Lash in the fifth as she goes through to the quarterfinals to be played tomorrow afternoon in the women's. In the meantime, let's just quickly run you through the winners today. Mason Smiles in five, the only five gamer actually, I think. Then we had Benjamin Ratcliffe defeating Veta Blomquist, Abby Palmer over Natalie Says. It was Zach Miller against uh, Matt Lucente and Miller winning there. Finn Trimble defeating Glenn Templeton. Chris Vanderslam over Damien McMillan. Wills Donnelly over Lance Bedos. And just now, Ella Lash in five over Rebecca Barnett. So just those two five gamers. Sarah Cardwell defeated Katie Carrick. And Alex Hayden over Tyler Dublay. And Lana Harrison against Winona Joyce. Lana Harrison winning that. Benjamin Adams in four over Upper Faria Lofa. And let's have a look. I think it was uh, Joe Smythe over Leo Faria Lofa. Caitlin Watts against uh, Grace Heimers. Watts winning that in straight. 
and Emma Miller. Bit of a tough one to start with, and then a victory over Dewey Bide. And the second seed, Jessica Turnbull, defeating Katie Templeton. So come back in at midday tomorrow. That is the second round of the men's, followed by the quarterfinals of the women's, and then the quarterfinals of the men's. It's a big day tomorrow from midday.